for the Board of Finance special <coughs> meeting tonight. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Public comment. Did anybody sign up? Is there anybody who wants to speak? Okay. We're going to roll right into this. It's a busy night. We've got a lot of people. We do have public comment? All right. Then we do public comment. My one. <laughs> Please just state your name and address so we have it for the record. Okay, for the record, my name is Daniel May. This is Georgette May. We live at 13 Blackwood Road, Brookfield, Connecticut. We moved here eight years ago. Uh, we are co presidents of the Friends of the Brookfield Library, so we're here to speak on behalf of the library and what we believe its importance is. Uh, the library is an important educational and cultural hub of this town. I believe that the town's true value can be measured by its support of its institutions. There are a lot of people out there that spread misinformation about the library. It's not just simply checking out books these days. It provides a lot of other services to the community. I'm a very, I'm a very busy person. I tend to be direct. I'm an air traffic controller. I'm a 15-year Navy veteran. She is a Marine Corps veteran. When we moved to Brookfield, we joined the Friends of the Brookfield Library because it's an institution that we believe in. I spent a lot of time a lot of effort, a lot of energy, volunteering my time for the Brookfield Library, trying to raise funds in support of its programs. Uh, this isn't easy to do. I have three kids, one who's autistic, five pets in a house. I, you know, my, my time comes at a premium. Um, but we work very hard because we believe in this. Uh, I, I think it's essential that we not only support funding for the library as it is, but looking for future growth and expansion to what its needs are in the growing community. In my understanding, this Green Danbury area is one of the fastest growing areas of the state, and I think we need to consider that. <coughs> we currently operate uh, trying to raise money for the library by mostly our book sale and by membership drives, things of that nature. The library building as it is does not support what it needs to do. We currently rent out two trailers at 8,000 cubic feet of space every month, and it costs us into the thousands of dollars to do this because there is no space for storage at the library. We have to move books that can, that can go from 50 to 150 pounds per box. We have to move it across uh, parking a, parking lot, lot, parking lot. a parking lot, raising, lowering elevation through snow, through ice, through rain, and you're looking, at, you're looking at a volunteer group that consists of uh, uh, a lot of <laughs> older ladies and myself. Uh, yes, my, my muscle is essentially Dan and Paul. <laughs> That's my muscle for doing all of what he just said. And it's not just down the parking lot, it's back up the parking lot after we sort it. And then to our Lord and to sell. But so I, all these I, damn books. I just want to be clear on the importance of the library. It's important that we support it. They do much more than I think people get credit for. Uh, people who say otherwise, I believe, are not getting down there and seeing what's going on. The library is not just open to, you know, just people our age going in there and getting books. They're for any age, any, whatever you, whatever language you speak, you can go in there and you can find something. It's for, it's for every single person in the entire community, and it just, it, it's like. It's a little hole of a building, and it's for open for every single person in the community. And as he said, we're growing. So, yes. Well, I would implore everybody to consider it and, and to give the library your support. I, I think it truly deserves it. It benefits everybody. I think we have no trouble supporting athletics, athletic facilities, things of that nature. And I have no trouble with that. You know, I'm a taxpayer, and I believe that paying taxes is the minimum that you should give back to your community. No, I, I think that's where it starts. And I believe in athletics because I believe in the good it does. I have no problem paying my taxes for that. I have no problem with paying my taxes for the police, for the fire department. Education. My kids are out of school, but education. public education. I believe in it, and I will continue to support it the rest of my life. I would hope that you guys uh, will consider supporting the library and their needs going forward. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you, thank you for your time, and thank you for your thank service, you. please. Thank you very much. All right. 
Yeah. More public comment? Thanks, yes. Hi, Suzanne Gallagher, I'm at 20 Rexit Road. I've lived in Brookfield about 30 years, well, 30 years this month, actually. My husband and I moved here 30 years ago, but he actually grew up in Brookfield. Raised our kids here. Um, really just want to implore you to, to give the, the library all the funding that it needs. It's supported, you know, my whole family for 50 years or so. And, and I, you know, I've only actually learned in probably the last five years a lot of the services that the library provides. And, um, you know, we're taking advantage of more and more of them, and I think they're valuable services. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Any other comment? All right. Not hearing it. He supports the library. Well. I support it too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really bad at public speaking. <laughs> I'll say it again. You guys come in force, and I respect that. Like you can't believe. I, this is like you guys come and you do it, and uh, it's appreciated from all of us to see your enthusiasm. Uh, so we do take it seriously, and uh, we appreciate your efforts in coming in to, to be with us. So thank you. All right. Let's go on to the. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm going to make a motion that we um, revise the schedule and do IT and finance first. I'll second. Discussion? IT and the finance is separate. I, well, okay. it says it on the agenda. Oh, We're going to do IT first. How's that? We'll make a motion we move to IT first. Yeah. Vote? Aye. All those in favor, aye. aye. Passes. Aye. All right. <laughs> IT's up. Fire yes. away. More, ha good afternoon. Good evening. How are you? Good, good. Thank well, you. Good. Good. New board members and members haven't seen. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, this is our IT director on the town side, Don Min. Mm -hmm. It's not lonely. Oh, it's good. Go ahead. Don Min, the IT director is having some IT issues. <laughs> Do you want to grab my thumb guide? No, it's just, I should already it's on, but just not on this. Um, we want to restart it. Time over here. I don't, I don't see your presentation. You have it on duplicate screen. It should be extended. It should be extended. Um, so extended will just be here, but it won't be on the Oh, all right. So while you're figuring that out, we're going to move to the library. Are they ready? to this? They're ready here. Is that okay, Donnie? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. All right. I'll make a motion. We move on to the, uh, item to the library. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Let's do the library. Get all of you over here. <laughs> Thank you. We're, we're reconnecting here in a second. Check and I'm the director of the Brookfield Library and um, I want to start with uh, a quick overview of who we are uh, so the Brookfield Library of course is dedicated to supporting education and lifelong learning and providing access to resources information and technology we also provide educational and entertaining programs to all Brookfield residents we also provide a gathering place for the community for the entire community so that's who we are. What we do is, again, serving the entire population of Brookfield by lending books, resources, and um, providing informative programs. And we have a very strong focus on early literacy, and that is defined as ages 0 through 5. 
We have programs such as 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten and um, all of our um, support for pre-K through grade 12 with our summer reading programs and our ongoing story times. Throughout the year, we partner with the public school system in so many different ways, and the first thing that we do to support the school system is by serving that zero to five population, we are the source for early literacy in this community. The students, the kids that come to us for our zero to five programs enter the public school system ready to learn because they have been prepared with our programs. So our programs are uh, educationally based. We follow the uh, STEM programs. We follow, we uh, coordinate with the curriculum at the, at the school and make sure we're scaffolding into that for the early literacy grades. So we really are a critical piece of the education system. And um, children who are read to from birth in that age group, zero to five, National statistics show that they score higher on assessment tests if they are read to between the ages of zero and five. And the only factor in those statistics is whether or not they're read to. It doesn't um, matter what their family background is, what their income level is, it's really whether or not they're read to. And we provide that at the Brookfield Library. Libraries build community through outreach and we provide resources. We provide face-to-face -face interaction with residents and we also save taxpayers money and we're a critical service to the community. So we've talked about why early literacy is important. Our, um, our, zero to, our, our zero to five population comes to our programs at an average of between 800 and 1200 per month. Kids are coming to our programs and parents. That equals about 10,000 attendees per year and that's a pretty high return on investment when you consider that we're sending these kids into the public school system well prepared. <coughs> so um, just some quick stats for one year at the Brookfield Library. These are our most current statistics through June of 2019. Items borrowed at the Brookfield Library. Almost 132,000 items borrowed at the Brookfield Library. And that actually uh, statistic has gone up over, a pri over the prior year, which is against the national trend. The national trend for library circulation, which is what you call borrowing, is, um, is actually going down. And in Brookfield, it actually has gone up because we are working really hard to do outreach to the community to let the, everyone know what our resources are. We've had almost 4,000 people attend programs in the last year. 10,000 of those are children and 4,000 adults. Uh, half of the residents in the town of Brookfield have a library card. Brookfield's about 17,000 in population. 8,500 have, li have a library card. Uh, about 100,000 visits to the library in the last year. Uh, we get a lot of hits to our website, over 100,000 hits to our website. And our public computers are still in high demand. direction here there we go okay um, so key accomplishments for the year um, one of the programs that is very important to the community is our support for uh, job searching and um, two two programs in particular we run a lot of programs throughout the year but two that I want to mention uh, the career coach program which is that bus you see there and um, uh, so that bus you see there these, this is a, um, a, a program that comes free to us, and it's a national program. They come and uh, teach people how to, um, they prepare them for interview skills, they help them with resumes, and it's one-on-one -on -one, uh, support for job searching. We also have Platform to Employment. That's a state program through the Connecticut Department of Labor, also free to us. And uh, the first time we, we ran this program, we had about three or four people attend the program. Two of them got permanent jobs. And we are running it again starting next week because this is, that was a pretty good, pretty good effort. So again, free programs we take advantage of are um, partnering with education. We uh, have partnered with a special education teacher at the high school and created an uh, unpaid library internship for students in the life skills program. And these are students with special needs and they need to learn um, job skills. 
We started this last year with a two-week trial, and it went so well that they are now there year-round, and we work with two to three students at a time. Uh, community outreach, we do this in a number of ways, especially by establishing relationships with our teen population. And uh, teen circulation in Brookfield has gone up 6% over last year. And when you're talking about teens and reading, that's an outstanding number, actually, to get kids to read more than they were reading. It's really, really important. We're doing a lot of work to make that happen. The, the difficult part for teens with us is um, lack of space. No teen-friendly space for the kids. So our circulation is going up, but our program attendance for teens is still not where it needs to be because there's no space. Um, again, in community outreach, this is under our key accomplishments again. We've had an 18% increase in adult program attendance over last year. We do programs such as understanding the U.S. <coughs> Census. We had a really popular bass, fish bass fishing program a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we do author visits, French classes, mahjong clubs, all kinds of things. Our, um, this program that, uh, that we organized with the teens, this next one on our list, was called Community Conversations, and this was funded by the BEF, Brookfield Education Foundation. This, was a, this is an ongoing conversation run by the teens in our community where they come up with a topic, they do the research, we provide a professional facilitator to train them on how to conduct the conversation with the public. And then we set a time for the public and people from the public come in and the teens give a presentation and facilitate a conversation. It's an incredible program. It's, we had our first one in January. We have two more scheduled and I hope some of you will attend the next one. Um, we also do a lot of partnering in, in various ways with the community. Um, facilities improvements, again under key accomplishments this year. We um, started a new art gallery which was paid for by our friends of the library and um, that really consisted of painting the walls and putting up a hanging system and um, we have a really dedicated group of volunteers that curates that exhibit and it's been extremely <coughs> popular. We had over 200 people come and see our last exhibit. Um, we've expanded our mobile uh, technology unit um, and, and now moving into the budget for capital requests, uh, I have listed our 10-year capital request, of course, includes a new library. Um, we're hoping sometime around the year 2028, and the reasons for that are quite obvious, I think, to everyone. Insufficient space for books, insufficient space for programs, insufficient space, and I could go on and on and on and on and on. But, um, but just for background, the building was built in 1975 and the uh, capacity for books at that time was, it was built for 35,000 books. We um, have more than doubled our population since then and we have crammed about 60,000 books into a space that was built for 35,000. So what you sacrifice when you do that is um, seating and uh, service area space and so we have books that go up to seven feet high and down to the floor, which is not ideal. Um, but even with cramming in all those extra books, we still cannot serve the population and meet the demand, and we still have to rely on borrowing books from all other libraries, which means very long wait times for people. And you might think, what's the big deal? Let them wait. But in today's world, where everything is very immediate, what you do is you end up turning people away because they don't want to wait. Yep, just real quick, I'm not saying that's a good thing, but don't all libraries borrow from each other in this day and age? We do. We rely more heavily than most other libraries because our... our but uh, it's a standard practice. Yes. It is a standard practice. Our, uh, our rate of borrowing is disproportionate to our town size, so we are actually consider, considered net borrowers and um, our rate of borrowing is, in some cases, twice as much as other libraries. And so we're actually not pulling our weight when it comes to, uh, to the state libraries. Um, so we rely really heavily on that because we're out of space. Um, so uh, our 10-year plan, of course, includes um, a, a new library. 
One of the things I just wanted to point out is recently the CARES, uh, Brookfield CARES organization did their survey, and I know they've been present, presenting it around town. One of the statistics that jumped out at me was that 12% of students uh, in that survey, these are teens, cited reading for pleasure as an activity. 12% is a really, really low number. And one of the reasons for that is, again, they don't have a space to come to and to for us to help promote reading. I think that um, if we had a, a contemporary space, or any space, actually, for teens, that we could maybe be one of the places where teens can come and maybe we could get that number higher. Um, so moving to our capital request for the uh, upcoming budget, we have three specific uh, requests in the uh, upcoming budget year, and um, two of them are surrounding an insufficient ca uh, handicap accessibility. Uh, I don't know if all, you're all familiar with the layout of the building, but you know it's not handicap accessible. Um, and uh, the two things that are most urgently needed in that area, we, we are addressing the uh, lack of an ADA bathroom downstairs partially. I, I think Public Works has that uh, in their budget. Um, but the, um, the problem is to create a, a handicap bathroom downstairs, you actually need to fix the door and make the door to that area accessible. So right now, if you do manage to get down to that lower level where we do our programs, you can't actually get in the door if you're handicapped. So you need someone to come and get you know, open the door for you. Um, so we are requesting two things. One is um, the front door entrance. Uh, and I want to be clear about this. This is a, uh, this will not be necessary if the window project stays in the budget for public works. The reason this is in here is because in the event that the window project, which is 425000 in the event that does not get passed, we're sort of pleading for at least to have our front door updated to be uh, ADA compliant and friendly. Uh, what happens now is it's one of the push buttons. Both doors swing open. They're heavy glass doors and they're on a timer. The timer is correct. It's just not sufficient for what we need because when the timer it runs out, both doors swing closed no matter who's in their path. And they're heavy glass doors. And so we have tracked for, for one month our staff, even though our staff tries to intervene and help people, they still miss some. We have injuries pretty routinely, several times a month. And the most recent one was a, a three-year-old boy with a head injury got knocked over by the door and, and actually had a head injury. So this is not a safe situation and it really needs to be updated. We would like sensors so that the door won't close if someone's in its path. Um, so that's one request. And again, if the window project goes through, you can take this off the table because it is included. The second one for handicap accessibility is um, an elevator. And um, I know that's a big ask, but it is actually illegal to ask a, a mobility challenged person to have to go outside the building um, in order to enter another area. So, um, so that is, uh, that is in there as a request, and also our um, security <coughs> cameras to tie into the police system. So that is for our current year request, capital request. Um, looking at our operating budget priority requests, we have um, kept to uh, under the 1.65% requested increase, and then we had um, essentially two priority requests, three that were all under the category of salary, and within that we had um, a request for a part-timer, and I know some of you have been on this board for long enough to remember that uh, originally we asked for three part-timers. Uh, this will be the third year in a row uh, that we're trying to complete that request. So. Year one, we got a part-timer. Year two, we got a part-timer. We're hoping we can get our third out of the three that we originally requested this year. 
and um, cleaning, uh, inadequate cleaning of our facility. Uh, you've got all the details here, but basically our building is open seven days a week and we get cleaning four days a week and it's about 30 minutes at most and it does not, it's not sufficient and it's you know, you get what you pay for. It's um, most of the prices that we have gotten. Sheldon has been very helpful to try and get um, estimates for uh, more comprehensive cleaning. And all of the estimates are, um, we pay now eight seventy five a month. The lowest estimate we got was about twelve fifty a month. So we really need some increased cleaning um, in the facility. Is that in addition to or? On top of in addition to the 850 or in place of the 850? The 1200. Well, right. the request we have here is is if we were to take out the um, it, what it works out to about 12,000 a year because it's 875 a month, and then there's on top of that there's carpet cleaning and things that are additional, so it works out to about 12,000 is our cleaning bill for a year. And so, if we take that out of our budget, we're asking for a total of 25,000. Originally, we were asking for a part-time custodian of two or three hours a day to be at the library um, to help keep the bathrooms updated and things like that. So, so is that the 10,000? Yeah, that's, that's 10, on this. We're looking that your, at that, the entire your? town. Yes, we're looking so at one plan to do it all. Well, okay. So, but but the 10,491 in the <coughs> library budget for. Your, your first selectman adjustment under facility maintenance repair, that's, what, that's what's being referred to now? No. Uh, no, that's no. no. This was our original request. Oh, this was, yeah. Um, this was we our worked original. with Sheldon. We had some meetings, and the, um, the first selectman uh, made adjustments um, that was the 10 uh, 491. Yeah. The, so this 25,000. Minus the 13 or whatever, um, the number is 10,471. After working with Sheldon, using um, the quotes that he received in 2018 and, and escalating that. So you've got a, a, a write up in it, which you received last night. How about, how about this question, Dan? Maybe good. of the needs that they requested, what didn't you cover in your budget as a general oversight? From an operating standpoint, yeah, or both. How about um, like as an overview right now of from a camera asking, standpoint, we put in the windows, yep. which they scare the front door. Yep. We put in the video camera because that's really yep. important. We put we have the cleaning services in from an operator. I remember that. And we added the third person yep. and a ten thousand dollar contingency because the problem we've had is somebody calls out sick on Saturday. Yep. They've got to call somebody else in. You have to pay those people. Yep. And what and we, didn't you fund? Uh, we, we funded virtually Elevate. everything. Elevate. Oh, that's what. That's yeah. all. I think yeah. that was Dan's question. Was around the about the way. No? The elevator. No? We didn't no? fund no. the. We okay. didn't fund the elevator. Okay, that's a good question. No, we didn't fund the elevator. And we didn't fund the ten thousand for the books. Yeah, we didn't fund the ten thousand. Okay, I think that gets to it from that point. Go ahead. You got more slide? Um, we at the end here. So I, I do want to just explain the book request, and that is that um, because over the years with lean budget. Uh, the thing that has taken the hit always has been our book budget because that's the thing that has some very you know some variation to it. We couldn't um, take a hit on fixed costs, so whenever things uh, were tight, that's what where we took the hit. So over the years, what has happened is it has forced us to hold on to books way longer than their life. And one example is. Um, uh, one of the results of doing that is in our children's department, our, our uh, nonfiction books, which is books with true information like science and geography and all of that, 60% of them were over 40 years old. So we were circulating books with 40-year-old information in science and technology. Um, and in order to take those out and replace them, that we haven't had the money to replace books, we've had the money to add new books but not replace things, so we've left outdated books too long. Was Pluto a planet back then? Pluto was sure a planet back, back then, and, and, and according to our library, Pluto was still a planet. <laughs> so, um, and we have books on Yugoslavia. Um, so, so there are a lot of... <laughs> A lot of reasons to not hold on to books for 40 years in the nonfiction department. 
Uh, okay, and then uh, we have lists and lists of how we achieve efficiencies, which I won't read, but basically we take advantage of every grant opportunity we can, and we work with the community, and volunteers help us enormously, and that really helps uh, keep our budget as lean as possible. Um, and a partial list of how we help uh, taxpayers and how we provide a return on investment. We also, in the coming year, will become a passport facility. This means that that is a potential income generator for the library. And um, again, it's, you know, how much can you put on the same staff? So, um, so we will start off slow and kind of gauge how um, what the response is for that, but we, um, we've been through the training and we're working on our application to the passport agency. So we're doing as much as we can to try and, and do everything we can to try and uh, keep our budget as lean as we can. So that's it. Questions? I, I, go ahead. No, go ahead. I have one. Um, with the elevator, if the downstairs bathroom is accessible, does the elevator come? I mean, I know it, for future use for the building, if, if and hopefully when we ever get a new library, that that building will get repurposed, and that's probably something that would still need to be done. But, We're going to need an but, elevator. So, in but does the yeah, ADA bathroom elevator. downstairs kind of alleviate the need for an elevator? So, let me, so I'll tell you how that how that works. If you're attending a program and you come in downstairs, yeah. um, sure. If you come in and and you don't need to go upstairs for anything, yeah. then okay. But um, but I'll. I'll tell you one example, which um, I've, I've told the Board of Selectmen as well. Um, we have a stu all of our story times, all of our programs are downstairs because we don't have any space upstairs, yeah. right? Our children's books are upstairs, our programs are downstairs, yeah. because that's how it works. So we had a, we have a new family that moved into Brookfield with three children, uh, and the, all under the age of six. Their six-year-old is, is disabled and is in a wheelchair. So they have an infant and a toddler, and they wanted to attend one of our story times because um, the firemen were coming to read books that day. So they were all excited, and it was pouring <coughs> rain. So here's, here's the mom with one hand on the wheelchair, one hand on the stroller, and a toddler running in between, and we don't have a ramp that is safe, so she couldn't let the child navigate the ramp on his own. And they managed to get down to the to the community room and then they can't get in the door because the door is not accessible. We managed to get them in with a lot of help and they were thrilled and they wanted to go upstairs to check out books afterward but that was just too difficult to do with their situation. So the ramp's in the park and rec budget this year, right? The ramp is in the public works, the public works. budget. There's additional the money labeled as the downstairs bathroom that will fix the doors, that will fix the ADA accessibility to downstairs, and will fi fix the actual path to get to the downstairs. So it's all ADA compliant. But you still and I do outside. understand that's still money. Yeah. I'm not suggesting yeah. that it was just asking. You had a question, Dan? I have uh, two or three line items that I just have a question about, just Absolutely. so I understand. Mm -hmm. um, the, let's see. So the, two. I don't know. Sorry. I'm on there. What? Which? So uh, let's see. So on the uh, 56116 department specific supplies, I'm guessing that's the that's the book that's the book budget. Correct. Can you um, remind me how that's how that's sized and, and 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 what the goals are for that number? So uh, in the book budget, so it's to call department specific supplies. So it's books and everything related to books. Mm -hmm. So getting them on the shelves, some shelves. Um, and um, and um, and the actual books. So, are you asking out of that how why, much? Why, is yeah. So, um, so I just really an education as to how you how you decide what an appropriate new book and related budget is on an annual basis. I see that okay. in the past it was in the '90s and it was cut down. And it was cut down. Yeah. So how how does that work? Um, it, basically, because it's one of our only variables, mm -hmm. it's it's kind of. When we get our budget number, we say, "Okay, this is how much these other things gotcha. cost, and here's what's left." Gotcha. Um, but um, our just for um, if it's helpful in terms of the education on this, our ten thousand dollar request for um, updating our books, that would buy us between five and six hundred books, okay. and so that will give you some idea of um, you know the budget. Um, 
we like to add uh, maybe three or four hundred new books a month to sort of keep up with uh, with new trends. And again, because of our limited space on the shelves, at this point when we add a book, we have to take one off. So, um, so we could use some more money in our book budget to keep up, but we do the best we can. And then um, the next one down on the software. Uh, there's a, a slight yep. increase, not being, but, but is, that, are, is that maintenance contracts? What, what's in the software? Budget? So the software is when you go into the library, and as Mark was saying before, don't all libraries share with each other? One of the ways we do that is we share our catalog. Yep. And so we pay into a consortium, a library consortium, and that's a fixed cost of about $40,000. And, um, and that they maintain all of our online catalog information so that we can share with each other and people can look from other libraries and see what we have in our catalog. And then the additional cost between, the, the, between that fixed cost and the, and the you know, uh, 7,000 yeah, or so that's left out. is all the additional software programs that we have to put into place. Like this year we have to all upgrade to Windows 10 okay. and yep. things like that. Okay. Anything else? That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask a question. Sort of like, I'll be asking all of our outside departments, sort of like, you have a library fund that has money in it. Mm -hmm. If we were to say we could give you half of the elevator, could you get half of the money for the elevator out of your library fund to meet us halfway? Is that legal? Or is it not legal? Or um, is this a way to bridge a gap? The, the library fund has a certain amount of money that was donated to the town that's grown, that's principal. Yeah. You can't touch that principal. About half of the library fund could be used for other projects. I am against using that fund for maintenance of a building. I would like to do the elevator next year. It's just my personal opinion. So I asked the question. Uh, the library fund, I think, should be used towards buying, building a new library. I don't think it should be for maintenance of a building. Regardless of what we do with this building, and hopefully someday we'll have a new library, we're going to have to put an elevator in this building. Right. I was just looking to yeah. bridge a gap and make yeah, it yeah. where there was less yeah. money that we'd have to put out that we could yeah. utilize other funds. I mean, we, could, we could approach the library board, but I personally would be against. I, I was just looking, there's a need now to yep. make this happen. There is a need now. And if we don't have the money and they have money that can be utilized 50-50, maybe we could figure out a way to find 50% of that. And we asked the police department to do the same thing with their outside funds. We asked the fire people the, the, to take some of their money from their volunteers and to put it That's in the true. trucks. That's true. Can we take that same thing and work together with the library and help, maybe help? That's it for discussion only. It's not for. Yeah. The, we can ask the library board. But the I, chairman of the library board is here. So and can, can I also just say that in terms of how we get support from all other funds, we we really do get support from our our friends at the library for our programs, and we get a lot. There's a lot of other ways that. Not we arguing on what you do. Support. I appreciate what you do. I'm trying to find a way to get there faster. How's that? Go ahead. Thank you. Um, yes, on behalf of the library board, I will tell you it is by policy that we do not spend those funds on the building envelope. We spend funds on cap capital items, some of them very expensive, but that can be picked up and moved as a part of the library. I mean, good answer. I was just looking for a the, way to make it happen. Yeah, the, li the, um, the library board exactly. recently yeah. invested yeah. in new sure. shelves for the children's department, and we specifically didn't invest in the shelves that were lining the walls. We specifically only invested in shelves that we could move with us. Oh, good answers. I was just trying to get there yeah. faster. How's that? That's it. all. It is. It's all always right. good to think outside the box. All right. Any more questions? I just want to make one comment. That I know that you've had a lean budget um, for quite a few years, at least that I've been involved in paying attention. And I'm just amazed at what is offered by the library. I mean, I, I, we go in pretty frequently, and a lot of times we go in something drastically has changed in, in a good way. But it always amazes me what you guys have accomplished with with the facility and, and the resources that you have. So thank you very much. We have a really excellent staff, and, um, and I think we have a lot of dedicated helpers and volunteers as well. Well, and I drive by, you know, I don't go in as much as I used to, but I drive by every day on the way to work and bring my son to school and see what's on the board and say, well, that looks cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, thank you.
right. Thank Any you for your time. No. I, I do have one. I'm so yep. sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. sorry. No, that's okay. In my limited library knowledge, um, you said you have like a lot of 40 year old nonfiction books that, you know, are those, I know like you said, every time you get something new, you have to, you know, take one out. Is there, is there any value in them? Are you able to bring in any revenue by decrease the taking out? I mean, 40 year old books got to, you know, that's got to be pretty cool. I just didn't know if there's a way to do that. Or say. So we actually, um, we actually do check the value of okay. things that we're discarding and Believe it or not, there's not a big market for outdated science books. But it is worth it is worth asking because, there, because when if it was if it was a first edition fiction yeah. book, then that would be valuable. Yeah. Um, I love antique stores. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. that would be valuable. It's um, not a lot of value, but you do try to the, you give them to the Brookfield one of the nonprofits to sell, correct? We do we do try and squeeze every last penny out of everything. Before it gets discarded, it goes through numerous processes before we actually discard. So we, we try everything. And then at, in the end, we actually offer some for free to our patrons if they've been withdrawn from our catalog, and the patrons take them. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Make a motion. We move to IT. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. IT. I got to stay. I got to stay. I got to stay. Are you cold? I'm cold. We're so much more bigger than you. You never used to need that. I have to turn it up. Sorry. That was just a bad. Well, that's nice. The dark. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful night. So, good evening. I'm Dami Yao, IT director for the town. Tonight, I will start with an overview of IT department and then share some key accomplishments, then go into some detail of the proposed budget. During my presentation, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. First, I want to show you our mission statement. Our mission is to provide efficient, reliable, and cost-effective information technology infrastructure and services to enable the town to effectively serve the residents of Brookfield. Our role, IT department has two employees, Dan Siegel and myself. What we do, for the big pictures, we design and enhance town IT infrastructure for the current need and the future growth. IT technology you know, continues to change and evolve. We ensure that town employees can use the technology efficiently and effectively. For day-to-day -day operations, we support all town hardware and software from user level to IT infrastructure level. As we can see today, we almost support almost 200 devices. For, soft, for software support, uh, we support a variety of software from general application, Windows 10, Microsoft Office, to departmental applications such as Munis, Tax, Viewpoint, and the, to IT system management for managing IT infrastructure. <coughs> for 2019 accomplishments, I want to highlight a few key projects from last year. Our major focus of year 2019 was the security of our entire system. To, com to comply with Microsoft security requirement, we have completed the upgrade of ADA workstation from Windows 7 to Windows 10. We have completed the upgrade of 65 users Microsoft Office from 2010 to 2016. 
Thank you for the board selectmen, the board finance to pour our budget, so we have the fund to upgrade all this requirement. We review and enhance Palo Alto firewall rules to monitor and filter all internet traffic. We install Centennial One, this is a new software, to endpoint protection to protect server and workstation from virus, spyware, and the network threat. We install the new software, des desktop central software, to manage it the update and the security patches for all Microsoft and the non-Microsoft software. We disconnected unused network jacks from the wall to prevent any unauthorized device connected to the town network. We separated public gas Wi-Fi from <coughs> town network Wi-Fi. We do lots of things. <laughs> we disabled a under the direction of the first selectman, we disable USB and the CD port on 11 public use workstations. It prevents unauthorized download and upload activities, as well as the possibility to inject harmful malware into the network. We also set up auto logout for remote users, like Marshall and the, uh, some, some users are working from home. They connect to the town network. We just set it up. If, not, if no activity for 30 minutes, it will be automatically logged out. <laughs> this is just Thanks a new a lot. New There's time. 30 minutes and Marsh is not working. 30 minutes. <laughs> we can fill that. <laughs> we can fill that. Thank you. We also implement multi factor authentication to Office 55 email account to prevent unauthorized access to the email. You probably received the email two weeks ago, and I haven't deployed, deployed, deployed to a board member yet because I thought you'll get an email or a lady to get an email, I don't want to get in trouble. But in two weeks, we will enable you. So you will need to see my instruction how to enable the MFA. Okay. We continue the cybersecurity training. We increase the frequency and the variety of simulated phishing email to 160 town email users. We have been implementing cybersecurity training for two years. This training includes the training video and the phishing email. I believe all of you have received the email and the training too, and then you need to do the homework. I got the call. And I do need to. I, I, too. I apologize. <laughs> when you get it from the phone, it sometimes triggers it. So, mm -hmm. so if I could just add something there. We have, over the last two years, significantly enhanced our security. We have bricked all of the computers that the public has access to, access to, the title searches and stuff. We found out that those USB ports were live into our system. We bricked them all. Uh, I was at a meeting two weeks ago. There were 140 towns at that meeting, and the speaker said, how many towns have been hacked in the last year? Three people raised their hands in Connecticut. And you know the number's higher because people are going through it, and they're not admitting it. We have to make our system as secure as possible. So the multi-factor authorization, that's really good. You get on a strange computer, it's going to force you, if you want to use the town email, to get a signal to your phone or to another device or another email and prove who you are. And we're going to continue to increase the security because I don't want to come to you guys say I need $300,000 to online. Because we're not giving it to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're going to get to show me the door. We'll go back to the door. Tell you to use my door. Be good, Mark. But in, in all the things, you know, I go to seminars and to CCM meetings, this is becoming a much bigger problem. It really is. It's, it, it's not going to stop. It's just getting worse. Be proactive. So if we didn't take training for quite a while, I will send the email to the manager, which your manager will be for the first like He will notify you if you take training. So other employee will send to the, the departmental manager, so they will keep on top of that. Okay. You know, I hunt down everyone who hasn't done their training. It's very important. We've all done I, I hunt them down individually, both internal and external. If you have a town email address, you're right. Steve, you're right. You're right. That's all. You're right. I know people are busy, but this is really right. important. You're absolutely right. How's that? So all the training, they all take about, each one take about 5 minutes or 15 minutes. Only the first one is a little long, 45 minutes. In the retrain. Yes. Yeah. And the retrain, if you 
if you click the phishing email, you will see another screen come up. Oh, this, you need to take a, you are a high risk user, you need to take another training. <laughs> so that's what we do. So you know, after two years training, our phishing test fail rate is down from 17% as a baseline to 4%. Oh, Excellent. Yeah, our goal is down to 0%. Yes. No one clicked the bad link. It's amazing. You, we get emails, and you look at them, and they look like they're absolutely yeah. genuine. We, get we use the exact yeah. same program. Yeah. We used them before. It's no amazing before. Right. how good these guys are. Yeah. And uh, um, and uh, uh, last October 2019 is the National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So we held three cybersecurity e event. The first one is a post. Is a uh, we post a 16 posters around town buildings, and then uh, with poster we have highlight. We have some were highlighted. So employee go walk around, find out the poster, uh, find out the highlighted word, and fill in the entry form. So the so they can el eligible to get a, to to draw a prize. So we all second activity is a word search. So we also. So we word search game, so employee can also uh, fill out the information and uh, like submit to the town uh, IT department. The third activity is USB testing. So we loaded the test file on 12 USB drive, then distributed around town buildings. If someone found the USB and plug into the computer to see what the file about, we can track the access time and the IP address of that computer. So good news is our employee, after two years training, they are very pretty cautious. And they handed the track, they handed back the randomly founded flash drive to IT. But except they are still have two plugged <coughs> into the system, and the one was never returned. Uh, we have conducted, we have conducted conducted a vulnerability, vulnerability testing in the best practice analysis with three vendors. This is a free testing from CTW, Highlink, and the Palo Alto Fiber Engineer. Based on the findings and the recommendations, we have enhanced our firewall rules to protect our network. So this, let's get to the point, is our operating budget. <laughs> <laughs> You can see our, our IT budget is very flat. The increase in the equipment maintenance is due to adding four new Canon copies. The increase of the communication is because town website post increased 5% support cost. Our in department specific supply, this is for technical supply. We review last year's spending and the decrease. Actually, we decrease forty-five hundred. But then I think we add the uh, voter department laptop twenty-four hundred. Yep. So that's why the registrar's laptop. Yeah. So, Dom, this is Dom In's budget to us. Your budget is a little bit different because mm -hmm. we've updated. She's adjusted at the yeah. end because yeah. her budget came in at right. one point six five. So this is her yeah. final budget, which is added the laptops. That's why it's over one point six five. And which one do we have? You have the final. You have the final. So on this slide, I'm going to ask a question. Generally, we've been looking at 2% increase. That's 1.3 on the salary. Fine. All right. Mm -hmm. I can answer that question. Accrued payroll. We have one less day. We had two days accrued last year, one day accrued this year. So if you go into the back, under behind the, the colored tab on your book, you can see what accrued payroll was, but it's 2.5%. And if it shows up at 1.3%, it means it's accrued payroll. So it's still 2.5, correct? It's not like three, correct. basically. It's just yeah, the overall increase. I'll yeah. never understand that math. Ricky did last year. <laughs> just like doesn't mean I know yeah. it now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> The, the what Holiday you sent spectrum. out earlier today doesn't match that 317. It's not the big, it's three, what you sent out earlier today is 313, 832, not the 317, 732. Yeah, yeah. Oh, am I not on the right column? No. You gotta expand. But, yeah. I, I, what I did, yeah. 
Okay. It does go over I because I told them that that was the right number. We have the good. department yeah. first list and the board second. He's, he's got it on preview. Yeah. No, I <laughs> you, you you grouped it wrong. When I when I when I, when I, when I collapsed it, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you grouped it wrong. <laughs> good call. Right, we, we ducked that one. <laughs> Thank you. So the 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 uh, the increase of the software is because there are two software are due to renew in February 2021. One is Novico. We another one is the uh, SSL Secure Saki Layer Certificate. So this year we get we add library and WPCA employee to our account, which make the total 183 users taking the training now. Therefore, the SSL certificate um, is is a protocol for establishing secure connection between town server and the computers. So these two software will review for three years to get a better discount. So that way you see a big increase. Can I ask the communications line? Was only added to the budget last year. Is that because you so did redistributed everything to the yes, department? Yes. Okay. Um, we had bought a new phone system a few years back and and when we talk about the leases, we talk about that again. The way it used to be done is that the phone system was in capital, and then the payments went against capital. And so that's not the way it should be. So we redistributed it so the payments went against IT. Um, and um, It's a recurring expense. It's never going to go away. It doesn't yep, belong. No, I just wanted to understand why it just appears. Yep. Yep. And, and before, it, it was also in um, utilities, but it's, as you it's no longer the old-fashioned phone. It is more electronic. Uh, IT. Digital. Cool. Yeah, digital phone. Yeah. Correct. So it's not under Ralph. It's under Common. So next is our, our proposed capital budget. But actually, at Marshall, you put on a small capital. So we're going to move on to operating budget, too. Yeah. Um, so you can still pull it up if you want. The, um, Small capital items are on the last page. There are a number of things that, if it's recurring and or if it's under five thousand, we moved it all into operating because it's not really capital. Good. The first one is computer replacement. Every year, we replace the obsolete and out of support workstations. We also purchase new computer, new laptop for the new hiring employees. Uh, for network upgrade. I propose the 9,000 for the network upgrade. Each year, some network core com components need to be upgraded because of the finite useful life and the technology enhancement. So this year, we propose $1,900 to increase the cloud backup storage from current 2 terabyte to 5 terabyte in order to allow longer backup period to store on the cloud. We also split the space and the cost with PD for the total of a 10 terabyte storage space. We request to replace senior center two switches. The current unit are over nine years old. I also request install additional town hall core switches for redundancy. And then also buy UPS to support new core switch. What are the switches? Switches is uh, where all the, user, all the users connect to the device. And that switch also connect to all different uh, network devices, like phone system or the uh, internet. So that's that's all the network connection to the main core switch. Okay. We have only one in Tango now. If that down, we cause the disconnection from user. So we want to have redundancy. So one down, the other one can become like regular. Yeah. And the third item I propose <coughs> is the software. I, I propose two software to enhance the efficiency and the security for IT and the user department. They are password management and the Microsoft team. So nowadays, everyone user has many passwords. I heard lots of complaints from users, so another password. So, the password from personal account to a work account. Employees tend to reuse the same weak password or use the same password for many applications. When trying to change the password, they just change the last four digits from 1234 to 4221, or they change it to 2021 or year 2022. 
So some people write the password in a note that posts on the computer or hide underneath the keyboard. <laughs> so following the cybersecurity best practice and the prevention of uh, uh, preventing a breach, it's recommended that eliminating the number of passwords where possible and to strengthen the password still in use. We want a strong master password instead of many weak passwords. With LastPass, single sign-on, the employee reduce the number of passwords and uh, only need to create, remember, one master password. So this is the first software to post. Second one is Microsoft Team. We have received requests to share documents among board members. So with Swiss or uh, Office 55, we can upgrade our license to business essential to have team function. When we create a team, we also create a SharePoint online site to store team files. Then the team members can access, share, and edit the file in real time. So the team members can be town employee with upgrade license and the external guest users. So if board members want to share a file, we load to the team. So then we all can share a file, can edit the file. Yeah. So one of the problems we've had here is our RBAC committee has been using Google Docs and they work on documents together, you know, through the cloud. But a lot of those docs are not in control of the town. We have, they spent the last six months getting those docs over to us. This would eliminate that. They would be able to use those. We would have them. They're a permanent record of the town that we have to keep. So it would really help a lot to do that. I mean, these guys are working really hard. They're doing lots of work. And they all have Google Docs. But we don't see those. We have access to them. But they're not under the control of the town. What is this and we need to get them in our cloud. What is the security of MS Teams? We just started using it at work and not, I haven't figured it's out. It's a multi-factor authentication. So when you want to access one with the application, they want to verify, is it with your phone yeah. or with your second email? But you have to be invited to that specific yes. team correctly. So it, it would be all town yes. employees that would be able to see it because they're on the network or? No, even no. for your email too. Yeah. For your email, when you receive my email for next year, two weeks, I will have a link for you. You can just click the link to set it up. Your, security verification questions. Right. So but if, if you create an MS team that's for our back, I can't go in as a board of no, finance member until I'm, unless no, I'm invited. You have to be invited to be part of your team. That's team. the part I wasn't sure. Yeah, I mean the Microsoft team. The team, yeah. team is the one. Yeah, yeah we are yeah. Team. Right now it's under evaluation. Right. So you are the team member, mm -hmm. me and the genie and the Dan, we are doing okay. some testing. So, so you have to work. accept invitations or requests. Uh, yeah, we will okay. invite you, yeah. yeah. Okay. And on the password management from the classes I've gone to, a huge percentage of hacking is because somebody's guessed someone's password. And what they do is they find a password for eBay, and they get their username and ID for us, and they say, what's the password? And a lot of times, their eBay password is the same password they're using. And I've been guilty of that, not often. You know, using the same password, it's very dangerous. For Microsoft team, is there any additional cloud costs for that? Yeah, uh, for in town employee, plan one, right now we pay $4 per user for the in town employee user desktop one. We pay $2 for board member, you have web client. So for the town member, town employee, we pay $4, we just pay $1 more. In is it a month one, or is it? For a month, a month. So it's, instead of pay $5 more for SharePoint server, we only pay one point, one dollar more we have all the team function. We can share a document. We can even chat. Can send with the, we long download to that. We can even chat. And some other functionality. And I think that so we, we looked at another service called yeah. SharePoint. It's just more expensive. Okay. And we think that Microsoft will do every functionality of SharePoint at a lot right. lower cost. Yeah. And is the last pass for every single, or just a town employees, where you were saying there's Right now, desk. depending on the budget, I'm thinking, First, we start with like department head okay. because they have so many. Not mm -hmm. everybody, so because probably four dollar per user per month. Okay. So we want to see evaluate with town department head first. So, so we started as a beta. Get some people on. Does it work? Do we think yeah. it's more secure? Is it easy to use? Did, is it the employees accepting it? Right. Well, some things we mandate, but we try to work with employees, like having their computers turn off over thirty minutes. 
when we did that, they went batshit. <laughs> I'm sorry, I used that wrong. They went crazy because they're used to just sitting down at their computer after walking away from it for two hours and getting online, and they didn't want to put passwords in again. But somebody could wander over to their computer. It's live. It's open. That's practice. It's just That's a good practice. That's practice. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, you do it, yeah. right? Yeah. In all your businesses? Yeah. 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 So we're doing it. Yeah. It's a window lock. Yeah. 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 So where does the 5,000 and 9,000 show up in the operating budget? Um, on the last page, we, we, we're, trying to, we we're trying to accomplish a few things. That we, didn't, we wanted to show the 1.65 in the operating, so we didn't want to add it up there. So it's way down at the bottom under, under operating on page... But is it a, it's, it's not capital? It's, 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 it's not capital, sorry. Yeah, it's cash it's capital. It's showing what we're going to be moving to operate and going forward. The, it is on the expenditure page um, 16, and it says small and, and or recurring capital moved um, starting in year end 21. IT shows the 19,000. Uh, police shows 11,554. <coughs> And facilities shows twelve thousand. That's the two uh, heating units that we've talked about. That number's not reflected in the percentage change from. Correct. We didn't want to make it look like Domin is. Yeah. We're trying to do a lot of things here. We didn't want to make it look like Domin is asking for this huge increase. So she's yeah. not. If it wasn't here, it would have been in, in the capital. But we want so next. But year, it's not broken apart here. So oh, if we wanted been, to make a decision about any particular line, it's, it's not broken it's apart. Buyer. So we're going to have to go and find them. Uh, if somebody didn't want the last pass, yeah, we're right. like we want to have a discussion about that. It's not in here as a line item. Have to say, remember that that was in his $19,000 line yeah, item, right. and then get the backup of that 19 And the last it's not so a, it's I not know a we convenient have that. way for us. So I can get this slide yes. and give that to because right. right now we I'm have. I'm not saying, I'm, I'm, yes. and I'm not saying just here, I'm saying for all, and, and I'm not. It was a good question. Do that, but it doesn't make it user friendly or easy for us in two weeks from now, a week from now, when we're trying to remember this. Correct. So right now it is in their capital budget that. Um, and we're, so we moved it after they submitted their budget, but we can make it easy for them. I, I totally see your point. But I also think in this case, this isn't truly her budget. No, no, hear me out my thinking process. This goes against every department. So I mean, uh, we could say she's asking for this 20,000, or they could take 1,000 bucks and spread it out over every apartment, or every department. I'm vote no, and then, I'm no, I'm just trying to say, I think that yeah. Maybe if it went in the operating budget on her side, even she'd be up at two something, but it would make a difference. That might be, but we have the explanation. No, I, I appreciate exactly what you're saying. I'd rather not hold everybody to a one six five and then have other things that look appear to be muddy somewhere else that we have to remember a bunch of stuff, yeah. or we could have just had it broken down. We're beyond that. Now. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about it because if we're. I have one last question about the I, last. And I, I have other ones as well. One about the last pass is there. Um, is this the only one that you've looked at? Because I know there's other options out there. Is this the best one, the one that you Yeah, like? I did talk to some other IT director when we had the meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, some, some, uh, some other IT used uh, like a safe, password safe. Mm -hmm. And then now, last meeting, he told me he didn't think that's a good idea. He said last pass is the best one. Okay. So right now, still under evaluation. It's not like a concrete, okay. I have to use the last pass. But I think last pass yeah. is very good. Okay, because yeah. I know in, in 2019 there was like uh, Google found some vulnerability with last pass, so I wanted to make sure if that, was, patch, if that was patched up by now and if there was another software that you were looking into yeah. that yeah. would have the same. Okay, well, I, will, I will look because right now we just uh, uh, proposed the budget. Yeah. We don't have budget. I don't. I don't <laughs> okay, you're not going to go shopping. You're not going to go looking. No, I'm not gotcha. shopping. Right. Understood. All right. yeah. So in their operating budget, because this is what I thought, I thought it was that, but the Board of Selectmen added 6000 to the software line on their budget and also has all this underneath it. So what's so this, what's, the what is that? 6000 to the software is, um, let me pull out my notes, but 4800 there was just, um, we had sent all the budgets out to the department heads to review them um, last week, and Dom Min noticed that there was an item for one of her software. It said quantity zero, um, and so that wasn't showing up. No before review. Is it no before review? Not no before. It was. Similar stuff. Yeah. Online online viewable form. Yeah. It's uh, four thousand eight hundred. Four thousand eight hundred. Yes. Online viewable form. 
so the seamless tax was uh, 4850 Because that was just a correction. That was a yes. correction. Okay. That's correct. Okay. That, um, that they found that the five-year agreement for the SSL okay. certificates uh, expires in January. Of, it was a five-year thing. It expires in January of 2011. So that was added for 1150 um, And then she, um, trying to stay within the budget, she reduced it by $4,500. Um, so that was a, a different line that uh, she reduced. Yeah, I saw that. Okay. And this is part of our continuing effort to get all our all our forms online. Stop using paper. Let people fill them out at home. Send them in. Saves overall saves time okay. and money. It makes it easier for our residents to do so. Mm -hmm. And we have to get more of our documents. We have about ten up online now, and we'd like to get almost all. Of them. Unless you never get used, get used twice a year, we're not going to worry about it too much. Question on the crypto and the operating budget. I want to show this. <laughs> While I was uh, preparing the presentation, I thought of some similarities between the security measure we have implemented and the measures to prevent the spread of coronavirus. For example, our firewall is similar to border control of airplane C4 for preventing the en entry of infection. Our system quarantine, suspicious email, file, is similar to the quarantine or isolation for a virus infected person. Our cybersecurity training is similar to <coughs> the education of people, washing hands, avoid touching your nose and eyes. So, <laughs> <coughs> so many, many organizations have started to think about what to do in case there actually is a coronavirus pandemic. We have also put together some ideas for how we can prepare our ourselves, ourselves, ourselves in the event of pandemic. First is communication with residents. The communication with residents is very important. Our town website is hosted by remote vendor. We can continue update the website, posting news and announcement anywhere as long as there is internet connection. Residents can be kept informed by first selectmen. And also with all 55 email, we can continue receiving sending email without interruption. Okay. And we want to provide the infrastructure to support employees working from home. Right now, we, we did the counting. There are 15 laptops are available to use for working from home, including the some from finance, uh, Marshall, Kevin, some finance employees, Steve. Uh, the last two years, when department head need the computers, we buy laptop, so they can work in the office. If there's a need, they can take home or go to the meeting. So right now we have 15 laptops can remote working from home, and all this. This laptop, when they connect to the town, even no activity, as I said, 30 minutes, they will be disconnected. Just in case other member of the other member of the house, they will be using the computer, so they will disconnect it for security reason. With our current phone system, employee can use their sub smartphone to access their office phone extension to make calls, receive calls, and then receive voicemail. We also want to identify essential employees required to continue to, the, to continue the departmental operations. Like we have to see what think, what department, who are the one working on the departmental application, like a payroll. Maybe we need to continue working on. Probably. Uh, right. So. I also made a table to show what departmental application can be accessed remotely. This application can be accessed when not in the town building. So we have a uh, finance department, we have Munis. Yes, we can work remotely because Munis is a web-based application, can be accessed anywhere. And the check can be printed to the office printer. And the, and the AP batch scanning can be done from the PC 
with a direct connect to the scanner. Land use view permit online is also can be worked remotely because they are web based. Town clerk park system is web based, so we still can work on the marriage license, birth certificate, but sometimes we do need the person coming to have a signature. So some work can be done, but some still will be hold until everything back to normal operation. A test pass collector assessor, the QDS quality system. The, the software installed on the server on the workstation in town hall, so we'll not be able to work remotely from home. Same as the uh, re registers application, you need to connect uh, the router in town server. So that's why I uh, hope we don't need to use it, but I just want to prepare. So this comes to my tonight's presentation. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Just so you know, one thing in general, we are updating daily our plan for coronavirus uh, between our Dep uh, Department of Public Health and the state. The state has a full plan. We have a full plan. I talk to John Burrell every single day as to what the schools are doing because they get sometimes a little bit different direction from the, from the state on the Board of Ed. But we're going to work in lockstep. We don't see a lot of issues right now. but. Uh, like I heard Burrell is selling for $175 a bottle. People are going crazy. Thank you, Don. Thank you. All right. We need a motion now. Let's move. Our motion moves to. Oh, it's in the screen. Thank you. Thank you. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Uh, land use is up. <laughs> Steve? I'm, I'm good. I'm just going to land use is up. We absolutely care about the It looks like we have a little technical difficulty. Okay, okay. Is this yours? Got to hear a minute while they're getting land use going. Oh, got it. Which one? They'll go to um, finance budget. Finance, finance. All right. And then I just click on it. I had to be the same way I'm going I need to get our Snickers in the car. Tell me about it. It would never last. Come here. It took a while to get to the There's less sugar in a Snickers. Oh, they have to go in the Snickers. I haven't even called my wife. My family would be the annual pre competition watching. I have my kids are going to do it. Oh, they'll love it. Oh, they'll be perfect at it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Good. How are all of you? Yes. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Alice. Do I'm the land use director? Hi, Alice. Hi, Alice. Never seen you before. And this is Greg in background. Hi, Greg. Nice to meet you all. Well, Greg, you should please sit up here. Yeah. Like me. Oh no, Alice. Asking you. <laughs> <laughs> are you crazy? <laughs> This is just an overview of Brookfield like Land Use Department. I was told I could only take five minutes. Thank you. Five minutes. Thank you. Five minutes. Thank you. We've got eight departments. Mm -hmm. um, we've got building planning, which includes zoning, ZBA, and then wetlands, um, <coughs> planning twice. Health, fire, community development, economic development, and conservation, which includes diversity. Um, our, our real main purpose is to issue permits and to take care of the health and safety of, of all the residents. Um, we do all the reviewing of any project that comes in. We deal with, you know, plan of conservation and development, um, all the way up to the final finishing of projects. Um, we also have development team services, which is every two weeks. Steve is part of that, police, all the other departments, so anybody who has a large project they want to, any project actually, other than residential, um, that they want to present to the town, we have all the departments so they can come in and talk to everyone at once, and it's been hugely successful. 
Um, the other thing we have gotten going is Viewpoint Cloud for online permitting. And Dumbin spoke to that a little bit. Um, our accomplishments, we got Viewpoint Cloud working. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite an accomplishment. Well, and for all the departments and, and people who are not necessarily um, computer savvy, it's, it took quite a while. Um, but now it's all building, planning, zoning, um, and inland wetlands use Viewpoint Cloud. Um, hopefully we're going to get health involved in that too. Health also has its own program that they're working on for all the septic um, data that has to go in there. Um, some of the large projects we started and have, that have created some additional work for us are Branson, the assisted living at 291 Federal, 450 Federal has retail units, which isn't that big a deal, um, and 401 Federal Road Medical Building. These demand a lot of extra inspections by everyone from wetlands to building to zoning. Oh yeah, and there's our zoning enforcement officer. <laughs> there, and I'm the wetlands enforcement officer also. Um, so those are some of the projects. The health department's made some amazing improvements on their online information, fillable forms, the same system that Domin was talking about, and also on the Carmody system, which is the septic system information that's getting online so people can look at that. Um, community development has had so many accomplishments, I have a separate page for that. <laughs> and this is just a picture of Branson in the works. You can see that, how fast that's going. They're going to be finished soon. Um, some upcoming projects that may require added resources. Um, I have it separate in capital projects, this slide for um, concerning GIS and satellite imagery update. The only thing that we really need for the seven departments is potentially some additional seasonal help. This will depend on how many projects you have going, the size of the projects. All of that. Um, once again, Viewpoint Cloud rises to the top of the surface here. Um, that's been a huge efficiency for us. And once we get all the residents and the contractors on board with using the computer, it'll be great. In the meantime, we're kind of having to train. A lot of these people have never used computers before. They do not have any sort of email address. So we have to sit down with them and go through it at one of the kiosks and it's and how to scan things a lot. But more. Alice, I'll tell you that if you haven't figured out in the town polls in, I deal with many, many towns. I, I don't pull permits here much, but um, I deal with a lot of towns and cities that use it and they're ten years in, eight years in, and no one in their office knows how to use it. So <laughs> you guys have man managed to do that, that's a big accomplishment. Yeah, we have um, Two of the admit, actually all of the administrative assistants, all four of them can help people now. And they hold their hand and work right through it. Um, savings on legal notices, that's been talked about before. The costs have gone up a lot because we're using these <coughs> times. Hopefully there will be some legislation that will say we can use the website. That would be great. Um, in the meantime, we've learned how to parse our words down <laughs> to as small as possible because the, it's by line that they charge us. So. We've worked very hard on trying to save money on that. Hopefully, the legal notices make sense still. Just the emojis. <laughs> <laughs> it's we we had to raising point. fees again to the to the applicants to start to offset more some of those noticing fees. Um, we've Does looked at it. We haven't thing? done it yet. In, um, in the last six months, we did look at building fees because we hadn't looked at them in about 15 years, <coughs> and we looked at about 12 different towns. And we're right there in the middle to just above the middle for fees for building. So we think we're pretty good on that. Fire marshal, we just readjusted the fees on the fire marshal, made them more specific to, for activities the fire marshal is doing. You know, every single sprinkler head is X or he's mm -hmm. got his whole schedule based on how much work they have. So on the land use side, we haven't done that yet. We're probably going to do that in the next year. Make sure level set us, are we comparable to other towns? We don't want to gouge people, but we certainly want to get as much we money as we We have an increase in our cost of doing business. Right. Yeah. Um, another thing we've done is um, we had our community development director, uh, Dana Ferraro, who um, moved out of the state, so we were 
debating how to handle her loss. And um, Greg has stepped in to be our community development director and I've taken all a few extra things um, that Dana was working on, farmer's market and some other things. So Greg is going to do so two jobs, community development and project management, particularly like the streetscapes where we charge his time directly to the project. And so we're kind of combining two jobs here. And we're going to see how it works for a year. It may be too much. How much of his jobs do we figure is billable to those projects? Uh, we figured 30% in our budget. Greg thinks it's higher than that for the next year. So how much do we cut? Greg, what was your estimate? Uh, for, uh, 75%. I think that's right. Yes, yeah, It's going to vary by year depending on when the construction site goes. Right. So I gave it for that one year. It's, um, so we didn't want to lowball what we're going to pay Greg out of our budget, so we left it in there at 25 percent. At the time we did the budget, and yeah. I think maybe still today, we didn't have permission from the school to charge his time to the school yet. To the new school project. I think we're still working through that. And we're working through that. We're, we're getting like, we're getting some pushback. These guys are still ramping up on the NBC, and we're getting pushback. I got a couple of legal bills directly related to the new school. Those need to go get applied to the new school. Uh, we met with Arcadis once, they, they're the uh, owner's agent. We started to build up the chart of accounts and things like that. We're going to have to, we were talking about this not three hours ago, sit down with them again because we really want to understand that we're getting off topic here. But the cash flow of when the money is going to be needed because that affects when we're going to do the borrowing. And we talked about that last night too. Um, meeting minute efficiency, we've migrated to Earth Channel. This is also all tied into the um, IT. And we're moving towards paperless for all the commissions. Um, there's still a few that we need to get on board with that. And if they can't, they'll have to just come in and get copies. But with the huge plans that we have, it's a lot of paper. Yeah. And zoning needs 14 copies. So, so when we first started four years ago, and this just amazed me, we had someone would take packages and drive around town mm -hmm. and drop them off at people's houses. Like Courier. That was expensive. Oh, yeah. We don't do that anymore. No, but in 14 copies, and we got rid of most of the wetlands. Yep. Yeah, wetlands, zoning been, still wetlands been, copies. has been great. Planning is getting there. I mean, that's probably not really on the town, it's on the applicant. Yeah, yeah, it's on our side. We, we have to figure this out and make it a smarter way to do it. But I trust Alice. You'll have to give your okay because I'm going to get a lot of pushback on that one. Um, also, another thing we've done is some consolidation of expenses within the land use department with building. That was more or less last year we started doing that, and hopefully we'll continue to do that. Um, another thing we did to save some money was we got quotes for Gersky Harms Homestead Farmhouse um, for some major repairs. It had to be reshingled as a historic home, so you have to follow historic guidelines because the state is involved in this, and you must do what the state says. And um, there was thirty-six thousand that was allocated for that, and we were able to get the work done by a local um, uh, company for twenty thousand. But the history on that, when we, we first went out to bid, we only got one bid. That was like 34000 And Alice and I talked about it. I said, this, that sounds crazy to us. So we went, we waited a few months, went back out, got more bids. And we got for 18600 mm -hmm. And the work that was done was done really, really well. Yeah, that's really good. What is the expected use of it? Is it just to preserve it? Or well, is there um, it's, it's, it's a very long and long story, but um, the state, before we got involved, there was a grant that was gotten that with easements to the property through, not historic, but separate commission. Okay. Um, it's a 10-year um, easement, and whatever you do, whenever you touch that property, it has to go through the state. And they are very specific. So they have told us we got slapped a little bit because we took a few buildings down that were hazardous. Okay. I mean, they felt it wasn't, that. Yeah. they were basically on the ground, but they didn't like that, so. Yeah. This is the group that came yeah. to us, I, I told the board three years ago, if you don't do this work, we're going to do it and then send you the bill. <laughs> so, so we have to slowly make we're progress. We're improving the property, slowly we had to develop the master back? plan, 
And once we get out from under SHPO, we can do more work. I would like to see the building that we painted and fixed become something like the historic society's headquarters. You know, we're going to have to put heat in it. The interior needs to be bummed. I think that would be a very good and a historical society. Maybe they'll man it on a Saturday and people come visit. I think that would be good. The Gursky Homestead project for 36000 was that a capital project? Yeah. 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 And, and here's the pictures of it. So we're talking about that was being it. done with the rest of the... It's sitting in the capital non I, I don't think we took uh, anything I, out I don't of know. that. I think we might have... Is that, is, is that capital non yeah. Um For just... That ended last yeah. year. That ended last year, and I think we closed it out. That was We may have closed it out, Ricky. Okay. Yeah, it was last year. So we could double check. Okay. I think it's around. That wasn't. No, I think that was removed. It was two years ago. It was approved. Yeah. And we did it last year. Yeah. Capital budget. Really, the only thing I have is the GIS update. Um, Funds allocated. We already have thirty-six thousand allocated, and we need another nine thousand because what we would like to do is a flyover, um, which costs approximately forty-five thousand. We got an estimate from Golden Ariel. Of course, we get two more. Um, but the last one was two thousand sixteen, and there have been so many changes. We really need a new baseline. We've tried to get. Um, we have a, a money for GIS in our regular budget, but. Um, what's happened over time is the wetlands aren't accurate anymore, the water courses aren't accurate. The, um, when they try to move the data from, say, a, an A2 survey that we receive onto the GIS, it's, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of expense, and we have so much now that we have to move onto there. It would cost probably as much as a well, Even the GIS maps that we currently have for the town are so far off. Yeah, and a flyover would resolve that with the right resolution. Um, the the state, in different um, methods, has been trying to get GIS region wide and then statewide. One year it worked pretty well in 2016. This year it was done regionally, so the resolution is awful, and it, we can't really use it. Um, actually, it was done last year. So hopefully. This will be the last time we have to spend money on a flyover, and after that, hopefully, the state or the region will get together, and that's that's what they're trying to do. So just West Cobb did it last year. year, and supposedly it was going to save us money because we do this group. We're putting out a much larger contract. The results were not to the level we need. It was on a regional level instead of a local level, but if they did one with better resolution we'd be able to use the data. So if we had this as a baseline, because our, our data right now, uh, the layers have been um, somewhat compromised from so many changes, we need to start with a, have a fresh start, and then new flyovers, you could add the extra layers on top of this existing information. Um, land use office remodel, I've brought this up several years in the past. I'm not bringing it up this year. Because we're going to get some estimates <laughs> very, very quickly. Um, we're going to bring it up next year, so yeah. be prepared. We brought it up we'll have some numbers. as a potential for the future. It's very loud in our office, right, Greg? Huh? Right, Ken? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, keep in mind everybody's about this age and nobody can hear anymore and everybody's <laughs> screaming on the phone. Um, and, and Ricky, and yours, um, your question the 35000 is in. Um, uh, capital non-recurring and it was finished it was done after June 30th it was done over the summer so we don't have expenses and Kevin is working on um, those who don't know if Kevin the big guy that just came in a few minutes ago is um, working on the capital um, update all the projects the pri the financial statement for, for you guys for next week so that'll be for every capital project we've had in the last three years okay. where we are are they closed out is there money left are we finished what do we still have to spend <coughs> so we have a, a better feel for it we're okay. what's your gut on it? I'm sorry what's your gut oh we're good 
We're good. We're good. I know you're good. I mean, you're good. How good? Not that good. Okay. I think we <laughs> I mean, I don't so think let, let, answers, let me answer the question. Well, we're no, good no. from we good. know what we have we and we know what we spent. We don't have a ton of money left. Exactly. Exactly. I got the gist. <laughs> I totally got the gist. Both goods gave you a different answer. <laughs> I understood. I got the language. <laughs> oh, this is just another picture of Branson. And then these are some of the accomplishments. Um, Streetscape, a lot of what Greg does, and some other grants and awards that we've gotten. And there's plenty more, but I didn't bother to. So the first three, we this is the first year we've gotten those, along with a thousand dollars, which was kind of nice to get. What gets us a sustainable CT bronze award? What are the criteria? For that? Sustainable CT is a list. It's kind of like leads or well yeah. for the thing, yeah. and it's a list of activities you can accomplish. And if you do a certain amount of them, you can get gold, silver, or bronze. Uh, encouraging recycling, right? Uh, you, moving stuff up from a paper environment. There are about how many different categories? Something about our buildings and our buildings. And so we went through it, <laughs> and we were doing a lot of them, and we, we're slowly changing the way we do things to be more sustainable yeah. mm -hmm. without costing the town. You know, it hasn't cost us any money. It's just rethinking how we do things. That's pretty much all I have. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Do not, okay. The flyover, that money's not there, the 9000 or it is there? No, we that need an additional 9000 There was some money there from there was some your money. budget, or you have it in your budget? That's no. in the capital. 36 is in, capital. in, 9 is in capital, right? Right. right. So 36 was put in last year. Um, so there was there was Westcock was going to do it, but now they're not going to do it, and so we needed nine more to do it ourselves. So a total of 45 when we're done. This is them through it. Airplane. Yeah, they actually do it. Yeah, they do it and get aerial photos, and then they have to um, basically hand do the planimetrics, so we can have those as well. Questions? Thank you. Thanks, Al. You're welcome. All right, so I think this is an IT so test because we <laughs> came in with one. Um, <laughs> oh, we we found the missing one. Now I have two. Now I have right. two. <laughs> no, I label my uh, So I hope I don't get kicked out. Oh, yeah, I had a little bribe. I forgot to give you can you come close to it? Oh. Greg will be manufacturing these from the LSC. Thank you. What did this cost the taxpayers? Uh, you'll have to talk to Dana, but she's in South Carolina. I'll give you her Exactly right. It's so charming. It's a red bar. She's not exactly. to her friends and the real friends really come in. Coward from these. So Steve, question. Two would be fine. Will we learn from these grants that cost us money? Are you now? Not you didn't do this. Like the person grant that cost us money. We don't approve their grant without reviewing it and having to leave what we do. So we signed up for that grant without reviewing it. Uh, you want to take a break? You want to plug through? No, we're going to go through. I'm good. I'm oh. going to go fast, go and, unless you have questions. Well, I'm going to make a motion we move to finance. Second. That hope all those in favor? Aye. 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 Marsha, your ball carry it. All right. Uh, first, to follow up on a question of Dan's last night, what line items <clears throat> did we um, just do a percent increase? Um, and I was unsure of one, and so I didn't ask you last night. But some of the um, health insurances, we did a percent increase um, um, based off of what they told us to guess. That uh, there was one that we couldn't get a guess and couldn't get anything specific, so I think we I forgot what the percent was. Um, that was the Medicaid um, one. Uh, we also did a percent increase of 5% for electric and street lights because Eversource increases their rates every six months. Okay. So those two, um, but we are trying to avoid that, which is 
why we've had some difficulty with the center fire budget because we want it based on actual and not percentage. Thank you for that. My question yesterday was specifically back to the schools, but that's, I appreciate oh. that. Too. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. No, but that's what you're talking about great. consistency, no, right? You're yeah, talking about you ask the question yes. one, the question gets answered by the other. Thank you very much. All right. Um, so we are going to talk about a number of different topics, finance, debt, capital, revenue. Um, all of the stuff you have in your books, and so I'm, um, most of the, the stuff you have in your books, so I'm just going to bring up uh, things quickly that um, maybe jog your memory about where you might have questions. Um, that um, uh, We talked about the current year tax revenue last night really a product of the grand list times what percent. Those are the only two things, uh, what percent we're going to collect. Those are really the only two things that we control on that. Um, that um, um, the telephone tax payments, there's a state statute that for someone like Verizon, they may not want to pay taxes to 169 towns and, and how many other taxing districts. So they can elect to pay it to the state and then the state pays us. That's what that bottom line is, the telephone tax payment. Um, every year it changes. We just got the letter in, um, um, I think on Monday for this year, the payment comes April 1st. Uh, several small payments come at, um, they're due April 1st. Uh, and it's going to be about 45000 this year, a little higher than 45000 um, We didn't know that at the time we did the $48,000 budget. That, um, you can adjust that before we... We can adjust that. Um, that, um... The um, um, other things we're just trying to do, an average of, of uh, we have no reason to think uh, back taxes won't be similar to, to the averages of what they've been. That um, she's very nervous about it, as you know, that she was very nervous about this year, but it looks like we're going to collect back taxes. That um, the supplemental motor vehicle, that um, that is based on, it's just, it's, it's like a mini tax. It's based on a grand list and a collection rate, but that grand list doesn't come out until December of you know, halfway through the year. So um, we based it on um, again what it's where we think it's been going based on the past. Um, uh, collection interest same. Sorry, can I go back one side. You bet. Why has that been steadily increasing? Because our fee on it is increasing or because people are driving more valuable cars? People are driving more valuable cars. So if they buy a car after July 1st mm -hmm. and they spent 60000 and it was fifty five last year, right. same right. car. But, but it's yeah. good. It's great. Yep. It is good. It was wonderful. could also be trend, the leasing trend. Is I also think so it's, Mark, cars. with the economy doing well, that we'll people are not holding their cars as long. Okay, let's trade that in and get a new one. I think we're going to see mm -hmm. that for a little while. Um, all right. The um, collection um, interest and lien fees. The um, um, again, this is on a cash basis that we that we record it. So that's why it goes up and down. Um, but we're just taking an average. Um, uh, in 19, we did have some tax sales, which is what uh, bumped it up there. Um, any questions on taxes? Anymore? Uh, licenses and permits. Um, that um, this includes a number of the um, all of the um, the uh, Alice has left. All of the uh, land use licenses and permits are really the big things that are included here. Um, before I get to those, let's talk about a little thing. HRRA um, changed the way they do it. They used to give us um, five thousand dollars. Um, and they changed that policy, and now they give us a ten thousand dollar credit on our bill. So it's a re it's uh, the recycling day. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If, we, if we host yeah. it, just so just so we're clear, the last um, column is current budget, right? Correct. It's not. Yes, I'm sorry. I just want to make. I didn't put all the the current year columns in because they didn't change, or I no, plugged the change to three fifty. Um, Can you tell me why building permits and fees? I know it had the big one-time jump, but we went down to 300 for expected, which is far below so, like the 1819, and even below 1718. Yep, that um, 
when I pulled the budget together, I went down to 300 because of this page. That the average that we've collected over the last four years is $295,000 a year when we take out Branson and the, the other one. The one timers. The one timers. Okay. The can I ask one more question? You can. No, that's on my mind. Are we going to get uh, permit fees from Iroquois? <coughs> yeah. But that wouldn't be this upcoming year. That would be probably, probably next year. they want to build in 2023. So they would be open in spring of 2023. They want to start in 2023 and finish in 2023. That's what they told us yesterday. It's amazing. Okay. I must have read the notes right really. So they would that would be a 2023 or 2022 okay. building permit fee? Fine. Thank you. Um, so the average was 295. <coughs> And when I did it on my own, I said, well, do we have anything over 100,000? Because we would have been getting, you know, 20,000 here, 30,000 here from all the different projects. So I had set the threshold about, is anything coming in over 100,000? And no, nothing new is over 100,000. Um, and so then we met with Alice and then Steve, Alice and I met and, um, um, they had a little more knowledge of what was going on in, in the past that is a $40,000 bill unusual. Um, so it wouldn't be in those old actuals that it would, we could say in addition. So there are two projects that, uh, a number of projects going on, but using their expertise on when these fees would come in, um, we were thinking that there's gonna be $85,000 of fees trying to humor me, I think we, we brought it down to 53, to be 50, um, because there will, there were some larger fees in the older yeah. years, so. Is a general trend going to be that we are conservative on our re revenues? Um, that's good. So maybe we don't need as big of a I, I would have been comfortable with this number being 400,000 because we have four or five projects mm -hmm. coming along. That could very well drop Asking next as a general year. trend so far I've seen conservative, conservative, right. which is what I'd like to see on this end. But that's going to maybe I think we're very comfortable with 350. Uh, well, the problem with the contingency, and, and uh, it would reduce the likelihood that we would use the, con that we would use too much of the contingency. No, actually that's not true either. The problem is that when we look at the budget, we can't look at the bottom line that we have to, the contingency allows us to not do an additional appropriation. And that's what we don't want to do. Um, but we can, our second, our first hope is not to do an additional appropriation. Our second hope is to do an additional appropriation. And in the past, we've only hit the budget, the expenditure budget. Um, but there's nothing that in the statutes that say when we do, we can do a balanced budget transfer to say it is an additional appropriation, but it's because we know we're getting more interest revenue. So then when people look at the budget to actual, they, they don't say, oh my God, they thought they were going to, the budget shows that they would be using half a million of their fund balance. It would still have the same effect, but we would show, no, we knew we were going to get this and it kind of softens it a lot. Um, so that, the top part is, are the estimates and how we got to the estimates. The bottom part is, uh, in that little box, is just the current year, that we're off on the current year. So to me, I would saying, well, how can we think we're going to get 300000 when we didn't make the budget this year? That, um, so we had estimated um, um, recurring fees. We based it on the prior 12 quarter, prior four quarters. Um, we had done a calculation because the storm bumped up some of the quarters. So we thought we were going to get 281,000. Um, and right now, we think we're going to get 204. Um, so this is part of that whole thinking that, um, um, of why I was nervous. Didn't we waive a lot of fees because of the storm? No. Because the insurance companies pay those fees. We did not pay the fees. If it was a not-for-profit and they needed a permit, yeah. Okay. But everyone else, because the insurance companies paid the fees. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, 
can we ask, can I stay on that one more time? You, you can. Since you're still on that slide? Yeah, still on it. Random <laughs> question about, I don't see it on mine now. Uh, fines. Let's talk about wetland fines. We got a wetland fine in 19 of actual 17,000, where we didn't receive 17,000. We don't know when or if we will receive that 17,000. In 19, right. we did receive it. The, the, um, we received two fines that year. The, the, um, <coughs> we received a judgment for a fine, and it's on the record of that particular piece of property. So when that no. property sells, we're going to get the money. We received the cash because... Uh, Did the, the property fine. sell for it? No, but the... Uh, Bank did pay the fees. One was a Blight fee. Yeah, I think a sixteen. No, I'm just talking on the wetland one. On the wetland, 17, the wetland one was paid also. That was. Huh? It was paid. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And we're expecting to see some more fines this year. Um, we're, Although I see lower than some, a thousand. Which is good. We've got some things in the works that um, this is not my area of expertise. Um, but as I understand it, we've got some things in the works, and we have to go through different timings of. Clean it up by now. Clean it up by now. Clean it up by now. Um, so it shows on this budget on the one that you get. I don't know if you no. sent it yet. The the current year we haven't cut, cut it out yet of the current year. Because yeah, I mean I'm happy to see that at one point it was estimated to be five thousand for this year. It got cut down to one thousand. Uh, yeah, the twenty one the slide. twenty budget is um, five thousand. Yeah, it's under an abundance of caution because what we found under the light. Is we're having no, I'm just talking on the wetland side. Oh, on wetland side. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't because know. Because shy of that one seventeen thousand dollar fine, in eight years we have done zero fines other than that one. So it would the five thousand really worried me. The thousand, we're still not going to find somebody a thousand dollars for something unless something egregious happens. Um, I should take more. So I can take it out. just want to just want to think about that. Um, that's fine. That. Um, I don't want to beat up a one thousand dollar right too much time. So um, yeah. all the one thousand is add up as we do. do. Um, An abundance of caution. Uh, because that would be great. To, um, so and then what this one was that we skipped was just to show you that the only one we really care about <laughs> is is building permit fees. The rest <laughs> are um, not too exciting. Um, when we look at um, in, any other questions on the those fees? When we look at the intergovernmental revenues, that um, it's pretty plain vanilla. There's only two that um, we're estimating: uh, veterans exemption and disability tax relief. Um, we have 7,500 and 1,500, and those um, uh, three of them. Those two uh, were just a few hundred dollars off in the current year. Uh, judicial fines. Um, we're estimating we get about four thousand a quarter. When you look at the current year, next, uh, as soon as uh, you get the budget to actual reports that Steve has, that um, you'll see this year's a little higher only because we're trying. We tried to turn it into an accrual basis. Um, this is what we've gotten as the the uh, best guess from the state. That um, the first column is uh, the twenty final state budget. The second column is the state does a two-year budget, so that's what they told us last year um, in the spring of what they would give us. Um, the governor's budget came out February 5th, and that was the governor proposed current year. It goes through a different, a few gyrations after this. It goes to the Appropriations Committee, which will we'll get a new one of these, and then it goes to the, uh, the final budget, which will get a, another new one. But that's what's in place right now. So, but out of this, the adult education falls on the board of ed side. The rest correct. of the fall to the town side. Right? That's correct. We expect no change for LOSIP. Um, we ex there's no change for LOSIP. That um, um, we've been using that to offset our paving. Uh, LOSIP is different than LOTSIP. Um, um, we offset our paving with that, and. Um, uh, it's the same amount. Um, uh, they're fighting now with this bond stuff, but it looks like the bond went through last week or is going through this week. Um, but we can't pull that until April. That um, um, they they bond it, and then in April it becomes available to us. And if we some year if we didn't spend it, we could accumulate it um, if you trust the state. 
going to really give it to you, but um, that is also another possibility. Last year? Good. Last year it was more because... Um, I think it was the same amount. Uh, the, the, the amount was the same that we were authorized, but if you look at the 19 financial statements, the revenue was more because we had some back years that we that we caught up on. Okay, yeah, so last year in the capital $30 change, you had three line yeah. items for paving, for bonding, for and, current, I, I saw and then a low SIP one. And I think that, well, I liked that, but just because seeing that low SIP amount is what drove the Board of Finance to add another $100,000 to the current. Um, and I think it's useful to kind of show that it's being funded through that. And second to last, it, it's kind of a one off three offset. And that was just me. No, that's cool. I just think it's very, very helpful to, to see that. At least the portion is one offset. It's the first column versus the governor's proposed. The first column estimated fiscal year 20 was the 307. Yeah. <clears throat> So, so it's I just have one question here. Yeah. So just on this particular one, 307 was estimated, estimated, it was proposed, he took out $127. Am I reading that right? Out of that? Mm -hmm. So shouldn't this be the sum of that? Aren't we, or did he then cut it again down to zero? Governor's um, fiscal year 21 versus 20. The, the, the governor's request. First, this is the schedule they sent out. That, so I haven't checked the math. But if you if you take, he's comparing column one to column three, yeah. um, no. in column. That three. is the difference no. of those. No. Yeah. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then the next okay. difference is the difference of uh, column one, one and, and column three, which is no difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is confusing to math. slide. It, yeah, it, it might be common core stuff that I don't understand again. No, but as long as it's right. If you yeah. take the 127 off the 307, 147. I, yeah, I get that now. But I'm confused why it's zero to last time. Um, because, let me find my mouse. He's compa they're He's comparing. They're comparing. The proposed fiscal year to the estimated fiscal year. They may be round here. Yeah, it's $127. It's close to zero. But they're comparing yeah. Governor's 21. Which is this three or six on the first line? That would yeah. represent yeah. too many numbers. That don't even make Not over forty eight. Governor's twenty one to Governor's, governor's twenty the final twenty. Was well, zero dollar? If they're around one hundred twenty seven dollars, Steve's telling me rounds to zero dollars. Yeah. One hundred twenty seven over three. It's seven. gone up two hundred fifty seven. It still shows zero. That's why. Yeah. yeah. But he's saying that so this one twenty this one twenty seven is the difference between the. The, gov the, the two so 21 years. It would make, I, these two columns, in my mind, should have been in here, and yeah. that would have made, I don't understand that. It's comparing so columns one column and two, two and three, and one and three. The, right? the, That's where yeah. it goes. The it's current 21 to the prior 20. It says right. in, the, in the headings. I mean, Governor 21. Yeah, you take the 481 and minus the 457, you get the 306, which is the 67%. If you take the 488 down to or 4881 to 448, it's 393, right? Well, I'm the only one that does, doesn't make sense to all. Well, it's not making any sense, but it's just not clear. And then the numbers don't make sense. The last okay. column so I'm not, is irrelevant. Yeah, I'm not crazy. Right? It's irrelevant. It's a year over year. year. They, that's they, they want to show as many 0% changes as possible. So but this isn't is the state that does that. This is CCM that does this one. No. That, um, so I don't think there's a political spin on it. <clears throat> okay. That's confusing. Thank you. The main column is the column three. That's what we're getting. Right. All right. The only one I want to see. That. Um, I agree. Charges for services. The only thing that's really exciting here is the conveyance tax that um, we, we go through each one of these with the departments that uh, do the collecting of the money. Um, the conveyance tax, last year we just doubled the six months uh, to estimate it and. Um, Generally, it's we can't double the six months. That um, is what we learned. That um, we um, because there is a cyclical nature to this. So this year, what we did was we took the first six months plus the last six months of last year, um, and then thought about are there any one-time fees that we could deal with. That um, um, so. Um, why is there? A why are we? Estimating a 10.53 increase in the town clerk fees is, is a 
fee going up for something, or we're just expecting more? Um, we are expecting more. It's, it's, um, what we were just saying is that we took last six months of last year and the first six months of this year, and and so there's they small changes in each time. one um, be, um, based on that. Um, there is we'll, some we'll like, so you're confident. Yeah. Yeah, and there is some caveats in there that there. The scanner fees, um, there's some bill out there to reduce the scanner fees. So even if you have your own scanner, we charge you a dollar a page as a state statute. Um, and obviously people are trying to change that state statute. So she's been, she's nervous about that, that if the rules change. But for the uh, what we have now that's not passed or anything. So you did that six month and six month for each of these line items in the services? Um, most of the line most of the line items on the top half for the town clerk. I can go back. It's in the workbook that shows which okay. ones we did it with. Okay. That's a small amount, but why would the dog license fees go down? Um, because I think 1500 was too high. That we're just oh, refining it. That, it that um, we've, we've um, um, not been making that much money. Okay. Oh, and at the bottom, you can see that um, the senior center trips, that's the 48, that's what we're grossing up. Yep. Um, and here's everything else that um, the big thing is the interest, and on the interest, we did the same thing that last year um, um, after we did the budget we changed some of the um, procedures that we do to earn more so we could earn more interest um, and we did um, um, so what we did to estimate the interest was um, we took the last six months of last year where we had made those changes and the first six months of this year and then we subtract it off because we're going to have some big expenses that we're fronting um, 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 for the school. That there was a school and there were two lines. I try to remember what the other one was. That um, so we subtracted those off that we're not going to earn interest on that money. Um, and the amount of money that we used was based on um, the current cash flows of, of uh, um, projections. Um, from Arcadia. It doesn't have all the school construction in it. It just has got the um, the pre-construction phases. Did you adjust for the Fed rates? Fed changes? Is that going to have any material impact yes, on what you're going to We haven't made a change today. Okay. Should probably do that. I agree. Interest <coughs> rates are so low. We might I mean, go low. We might go basic low. Points. We'll look at it. Right, so we're not going to earn <coughs> the 460000 yet. Right. Well, yeah, right. Wow. Good call on that. Um, and nothing, I don't see anything else exciting on that. We always get a little bit of miscellaneous. We've never budgeted. I hate miscellaneous. I hate other. I hate um, so, what that miscellaneous <laughs> is, um, is sometimes dollars that, up. that um, we get money for um, if people don't pay, don't use all their flexible benefit money. That um, that's um, the, a big. We get part. money from when the dog catcher catches somebody. It's usually about fifty dollars a year. Two dogs get caught and get fined, and they actually pay it. Things like that. Um, and then the big one. The reason why it's, some of them are big numbers is sometimes we get money from. Um, Kerma, and that's in the range of fifty thousand dollars. That if they declare it a dividend, I don't know if they call it a dividend, but it's a return of premium to the insured. Why is it so low this year? Company. I mean, I'm only getting to see a couple of years historically here. 104, 131, 39 is a low number. Okay, 50. So um, why are we down to three? Um, I mean, 39 was 39. A um, the 18 and 19. So 19. Is a nice number. It include it, it's a good number. I hate to say it that way, um, but it included the um, um, almost fifty thousand dollars of money from I think it was forty eight thousand dollars of money from Kerma, and then these other little things. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Kerma tells us Kerma. they won't. They will tell us don't expect they it. 
Um, they only announce it. We even don't know for the current year that they'll tell us in June, and they don't do it every year. Um, 2018, um, we had some uh, balancing issues that, um, so there's probably 50 of KERMA and 11 of going the other way of balancing issues. Um, and 16 and 17, um, I don't have a lot of confidence, and there was a lot of schmutz put in there that, to be honest, that schmutz, schmutz. that, um, is that a, is that a technical yeah. word? Is it schmutz? It, it is. It's a finance term. Everyone understands. I need a degree in finance for schmutz. Um, that's, um, <laughs> So, yeah, master's degree in finance. So, a lot of schmutz in there. I don't think my grandmother had a degree in finance. She said schmutz all the time. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That, um, so, so the, the things were not as clean cut back in those years. I, okay, I understand. That. What's driving the changes in the building rents? Sold a, uh, we sold, sold the property. The property. That, um, we sold 48 49 Federal Road. Federal Road. Federal Road. Federal we yes. sold the. And, and junction. We bought the option from the state. Remember, they had an easement on. They gave the, the land to the, the rental property that we collected. The town the allowed the property owner to put a parking lot on the land that had an easement. So we paid the state two hundred twenty thousand dollars to buy the easement off, and then we sold it to the property owner for four hundred six. So that 465 last year, we used half of that to pay down. Yes. Capital. Yes. Where's the other half? Yep. It still it was in capital, and we used it to buy the Grimes property. And the Grimes property is. It, we used it to buy that property, and the forty three. Or the new um, police property. And the Neighbor. that rent is not on here. As we we've got another fund called the town rental fund. So we anticipated that rent would go in the town rental fund. Oh, what's that going to be used for? Um, mostly to cover the building. And what we did before was the money that had accumulated in that fund, um, we took the other half of the money for 43 Silver Mine Road, was used for, um, was from that town rental property. It built up, but usually it keeps track of the houses and, and um, does repairs on the houses and, and those costs. So, so we're going to need all of that. Money for those repairs? No, there's there's um, the money there is built up to four hundred thousand. We took two hundred, and then don't quote me on the numbers. I'm the but rough as ninety five percent confident in them. That there was four hundred thousand that had built up. We took two hundred thousand. Some of it we couldn't take, um, um, and <coughs> but we could take it again. Um, if we needed it, that, um, uh, but there's just there's not that much left in there. That um, there's some restricted and some unrestricted, and I've got it on another page. That um, uh, Alice said the Conservation Commission uh, uses that money for these properties, and she had asked us to keep some amount of money that's unrestricted in there, um, a base so amount. Remember, we saw the gentleman left his house to the town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and particularly for conservation. We looked at it, we went through it, we sold that property, that is restricted. The income, the rental income from that was also restricted. But the income rental from the two properties, one on Gursky and one across the street at the concert, what do they call it? The Nature's Nature. No, 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 uh, you know, our, oh, we, I forget what we call it. There's a white house. So you know where the Gursky house is, there's a little red house behind, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? quarter of the way up the hill, we rent that house out. Directly across the street, it, I forget, it's a nature conservancy, yeah. there's a house there, we rent that house out. Those rents can are totally free and clear, we can use them. Now we do use some of that money to fix those houses. Uh, the red house on the Gursky property, we did do one side of the siding on that house. You can't really see it, but we did that. So we use it to maintain those houses. But we have not had to use a lot of it. So we were able to take that money to buy the Grimes property. Marshall, we have two line items for town rental, for building rentals. You just said you had a separate um, I see one here. And one is in a separate fund, the conservation, uh, the Grimes fund, I forget okay. what we call it. Town yeah. rental, probably called all different names. Um, and where is that one tracked? That one is not the general fund. I understand fund. it's not going to be it's revenue to show up here. It's outside of the budget, though. I understand it's outside um, of the budget. It's with conservation. It's in a separate fund. Um, in the special revenue type funds, 
Um, so it's in this financial statement on page. And who decides when money gets spent? <laughs> I was. I was. Who, who decides when money gets spent out of that? Um, money has only been committee. spent. Conservation, conservation spends committee. it yeah. for their purposes. They spend it for their purposes, but yeah. when it was used for something else, um, it went through the whole <coughs> process of town meeting and, and things. It's never been used for anything other than conservation so far. I'm just was asking questions. But Thank you for the answers. Can you anticipate? Uh, renting out the silver mine property? Until it's already rented. Oh, it is? Okay. Well, we just signed a new lease with the current renters they wanted to stay on. Okay. But that'll go into this line, item, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. No, but that's not included now. No. Oh, no, no we, you don't, we don't have it here. No, no it's it it. conservation money? It's, it's going into the town rental fund. That, um, that they're not the ones that have building. been overseeing it. We can put it any place you want to put it. It doesn't just Alice is overseeing it. It is not restricted, not though. Enough. I don't think that because what I'm going to call it is that one is conservation fund, right? This one is a revenue to the town. Mm -hmm. This fund. I don't see why that property would go into the conservation sure fund and not into the town fund. That's fine. Personally, yeah, no, no, no. That's a good point. We'll look at it. Thank you. That um, the um, any other questions on anything revenue? Thank you. All right. Let's go to capital and debt. That um, uh, capital and debt. That um, not too much exciting is happening. This is all exciting. Um, uh, debt. I, hold on. Can you let us get to the page? Yes. Because you're not going in the order of the there are book. Ah, sorry. So, uh, where is that? It's on Here it is. Twenty. I have a twenty-one of the actual big book. Oh. Okay. Uh, Thirteen. Ten. Thirteen. Um. Um, bond interest, we have a, a schedule that we allocated out. Um, some of the bond interest is in the general fund, some of the, the bond, in bond interest in principle is here. Some goes into the um, uh, water assessment fund and some goes uh, to the WPCA. That, um, but we've got a master schedule that divides that. That uh, short-term financing are things like a bank loan that's just based on the number of payments. Uh, and, and this year it includes uh, some lease payments as well that, um, as we talked about, I didn't like the way we did the lease payments. Um, they thought they should be in debt. The um, 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 ban interest is just multiplying the uh, bond anticipation note that we have outstanding times the rate. Uh, financing costs, as Steve said, we saved a lot of money after we went out to bid. Uh, so we reduced that. Uh, last year was the first year um, we put um, financing costs in the general fund budget that, um, that the, um, um, to me, that we shouldn't be bonding for the financing, the annual financing costs. So we tried to divide it between annual and then the bond costs for, for multi-year. Um, that, um, but the, so that's why it went in in 20, and that's why it went down in uh, 20. That um, the reason it goes up in in um, 21 is we were not anticipating having a bond um, a rating this year. That um, um, but we ended up having a rating because uh, we redid that because we weren't going to do permanent financing, but. We did a rating, uh, it's about $20,000 um, because um, we did refinance that 2010 bond, but all that gets rolled up into the bond as, as part of those costs. So that's why it goes up next year. Um, any questions on debt service? Capital, um, we have the um, 
uh, transfer to the capital non-recurring, and I, I just put in the department request just because I didn't want to extend it all the way along, but we've talked about what that number was. Um, here are those small and, and uh, or non-recurring things that the departments didn't have, that the, they had them in their capital budget, that uh, so we had taken the 2.2 plus the 42,000 to equal the model um, before the selectmen made their adjustments. But um, to Mark's point, we'll do a transfer to move those up into operating and push, keep them in operating going forward. Um, transfer to heart and hypertension fund. I think we talked about this briefly at one time. We have a separate fund for heart and hypertension, like a self-insurance fund that, um, um, and it, it's out before of money. Before we go back, before we go, Marshall, okay. let me, I've just been thinking, I apologize. That's I think that's a right move to move those into operating so yeah. we can track them. And I, I'll say I appreciate your, your getting to 165 and you working with your departments, but in this case, that department might need more money. And I think in Mark's case for going forward future, instead of looking at a 19000 on a capital line, we can look at it much easier. I don't have a problem with yeah, moving it. There's just two cash ways anyway. of looking at it. I have no problem with moving it, because then next year when you look at it, you're going to look apples to apples. Right. Mm -hmm. And, yes, uh, and, and so, so if another department is trying to do that. that. In, in fairness, and what was discussed, so you know, Steve, mm -hmm. is we're trying to hold you as accountable as the Board of Ed as accountable. Sure. And so this would be, if this was a Board of Ed side, we would question it. Yeah. Yep. That's fine. That's fine. And, and fine. I put it there be, just because I was thinking that it was the capital. They had the request in their capital. We were paying we for were it over the, in capital. We were the ones that so moved it. So. Just no, moving it into... It's all good. It's we're all on the same page. As long as you know what it is. Yeah, but move it to operate and then we can yeah. do apples. And apples we're still apples. well under the, the, we're the good. model and yeah. operating agree. anyway. Um, transfer to heart and hypertension fund. I just didn't think we wanted to ignore that. The, the, the heart and hypertension fund pays out some benefits every year, about 15,000 of benefits. It's underwater um, by about 15,000. So we just want to move some money every year over there so that we fund it. That um, we don't want it to have a negative fund balance. And, and so is there fund. somewhere that that could show us 15,000 plus 5,000? Um, if, if that's what you're telling us, that is that twenty yeah, grand, the, the, the grand actual plus five thousand. Yeah, uh, it uh, wasn't. Um, yeah, it's just uh, you know I, I yeah. like things broken yeah. off. Um, and I didn't quite Easier. plan it that um, precisely. So let me tell you what the negative, uh, what it's under. You don't have to do that tonight. All right. So it was under fifteen thousand at June thirtieth of nineteen. Um, it was under 14,000 on June 30th of 19. It'll be under 25,000 by June 30th of 20. That I could do it and do the whole thing. I just thought, my thoughts was if we funded the same amount every year, but if you want, I can fund the whole thing, the whole negative, and dollar for dollar of what we think we're going to spend. I think Mark was saying, I don't think you disagree with the way we're looking at it, but he wants it in two different lines. Yes. One is actual expenses for this year and, and then paying off. Paying the, off the, and what I'm saying is we're not paying off the whole thing with the I 20. Know. No, we're no, not. No, no, no. I know. We're paying off a About portion. five of it is paying off. He right. just wants it on two lines. I think it just sure. makes it clearer. No, the whole 20 is, by the time we get to June 30th, we're going to be um, probably 25 underwater. So didn't you, didn't you say that our you said it was annual cost is fifteen? Uh, but we but at June thirtieth of nineteen we were four, we were the annual cost is ten. Uh, that um, uh, take a breath. Yeah, yeah, take a yeah, breath. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so yeah, think, huh? here we go. That's why I said you don't have to answer this tonight. No, I can answer this tonight. That's why I have to say that at June thirtieth of nineteen we were approximately fifteen underwater. Hold up, get, hold up. If I can. Yeah. What is our annual f fee for that? Fifteen thousand or ten thousand? Ten thousand. Okay. Yeah, I just had fifteen. Oh, that's fine. So, so ten thousand is the annual fee. Yep. So at nineteen, or, or we're fifteen under. By the time we get to June thirtieth of twenty, we'll be another ten under. So we didn't pay any of it this year. We're paying it, but we're we're not paying it. But, but if we're going ten thousand more under this year, we didn't pay any of it this year. Or we were making up for if last year. 
we're, if it, no, we're borrowing it, the it, money, it's essentially borrowing the money from the general fund to pay it. We are paying it every month. No. I'm, maybe I'm confused. <laughs> if we were 15,000, I'm going to use round numbers. If it's a 10,000 annual cost, if we were 15,000 this point last year to use this. We're now 25,000 under. That, did we not pay the 10,000 from last year? Or are we burning way more than $10,000 a year? Because if so you paid 10 grand and we burned another 10, we have 20 grand a year. No. Somewhere I think the math is so how can it yeah. grow? June 30th, we were 10,000. June 30th, we were 15,000. June 30th of 19, right. we were 15,000 yes. um, under. Right. We made a loss this year of 10,000 because we paid money, we don't get any income. That um, So this year, we'll make a loss of 10. So our net equity is 25. Okay, so let me ask you this question. Do you understand it or not? 15 is underwater last June. At June of 19. 19. We paid all. You said we paid all the expenses for ten thousand this year, right? Yes. So all the actual expenses incurred, we're paying like OPEB. We're paying them as we go. Yes. Right. Yes. So if we're paying all the expenses this year, how do we grow if we can't be paying all the expenses? Okay. Okay. So. Um, are we missing this? Yes. Yes, you are. The um, so our. Equity or retained earnings right. or fund balance, um, the accumulated amount at June thirtieth of nineteen was fifteen thousand. Yes. Over what period of time? Up to date. The, ever, the, ever, since, ever, ever since. Ever since it started. Yes, so that exception. so that we're fifteen thousand underwater. We pay another ten thousand of expenses of current year expenses. Yeah. So we didn't pay that anything towards the debt. So we didn't pay anything towards the debt. We pay another ten thousand of expenses. Our equity now becomes a negative twenty-five thousand. So well, my question payment. that you said yes to, did we fund that with anything in the last year? So. Because I no, thought you said no, yes. No, we didn't so fund so. So, that was the cr we're so when the I asked in the beginning, when I said, did we pay anything? And you said, yeah, we, we paid uh, the, Sorry. We, so we're, we're, paying the, okay, we're paying the so, recipient. So the 20000 yeah. that we're, you're proposing that we pay this year, we'll pay off the 10000 that we are going to currently owe. Yes. Year, and ten grand off of this twenty five. Um Yes. Minus yes. Okay. And so it'll take a few years for us to, to get us back. Years. Years. Yeah. We yeah. want to be flat. Does yes. it make more sense I, to pay more so, now to get closer yes. to the I, 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 I see yeah. where I misunderstood. When you say, did we pay yeah. anything, yeah. We're, yeah. We're, yeah. we are paying the yeah. recipient. But we didn't have a line item for that 10 Correct. grand. So that's brand new, the 20,000, okay. because okay. we yeah. don't want to, sense. because we don't want to let that just get in the hole so further and So to my point current of current if this was broken down into two different general items, general right, debt and current fee that we'll use in the next year, Left now it takes becomes, me a minute, but I got it. Now it becomes for the years going right. down the road, we can see the chunks so we've taken off. 20,000, I'm going to Current do year to date might go to 12 or 13, but we can just pay the same spent. amount off. And we were going to ask that question. And, and then, then yeah. back funding. Right. Funding. Is there a reason why we're sticking to 20,000 instead of paying off more of it now so that we have budget? It's just a number that we picked. It isn't a huge amount of money, so we just pay it off over the next three or four years. And we I need it to should be clean. But this is left pocket, right pocket right now, right? right. So, yeah, it's real money. No, it just could, but the money came out of the general fund. Right. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, you're right. But you don't want it. Like, yeah, no, no. I, I don't quite get it. You're it. It. It's, it's not, not a good idea. idea. I don't see an absolute need to fund the general fund with this money. Like, we want to get over 10%. We're at 958 We want to get the general fund up. So this is just for tracking purposes. This yeah. isn't for, for the most part. Anything. It we doesn't, get we, we could let that fund go negative, no, but. No. What's the it's best, best way to get it clean? Yeah. How about that question? I th I think what she has on here is the best way to get it clean. I just want to see it. Yep. Yeah. Let's do it over yeah. the next few years and just minute, get us up I, to zero, and then we're done. Dan, yeah. you understand that? Yeah. I don't. Mark says he does. So I don't. The, the breaking it out will help. Brianna said she understands it. That's the first. Because we're essentially just borrowing it from ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it's not. It's just left right. pocket, right pocket. Right. right. Uh, so so paying it all off in one year right. it doesn't, doesn't matter. more harm than letting it ride out. Yeah. Right. Paying a chunk of it off. Right. 
size for Correct. Yep. <coughs> um, not quite a Ponzi scheme. Ricky understands. Uh, and, <laughs> and we don't have to have a separate fund for that. But there, are, well, there is a potential liability if someone else claims there's a there was an open window for heart and hypertension for the police. We still have three police officers eligible. So if we moved it into the general fund and then we get a claim, um, no, no, no. The this really, case, I, I the, think no. you're right though with the two lines because the next person, God forbid, you get hit by a bus and we're freaking we, nobody will be able to follow it. No, I'm just saying we just talked 20 minutes around this thing and we've yep. taken the life insurance policy out of Marsha. Uh, <laughs> payable uh, to the town. But you can understand what I'm saying. If we boys. talk 20 minutes around it now, the next people are going to be talking an hour around it. All right. And then the only other weird thing on the, the, well, there's a weird thing on this page is um, this lease cost that we're changing the way we do that. Um, that um, and, and, and for example, the telephones. We said, oh, we're going to buy twenty-five thousand of telephones over five years. This is in the past, and it was twenty-two hundred dollars a month. That we'd keep a capital project open and put the lease payment against it. Okay, well, that's not really the way you do it. You say. This, we want to buy the phones for $25,000, we are going to finance it with a lease, and then we put the debt payments every year in here. It just <coughs> is the way GAP works. Yep. Um, and so that's what just, so this is what's left in the capital projects that's really lease payments. Because we started that pro year, that that last, year. last year. That was last year. You, you, for, you from the um, printer leases and everything like that, we, we started that process last yep. year. Yeah. All right. So, and then we have contingency, which I just made a note, I cut it off here, you can't see that we added, the selectmen added 25,000 more, but I made a note at the bottom of the screen. Just wanted to get this for conversation. Um, and we can talk about that in an executive committee if you want, I've got the breakdown with the executive session. Um, huh? <laughs> Why do we have to talk about that? Because uh, we can go into that because we're under, we're right now negotiating with the unions. Thank you. Um, and, all right, so that is that. So um, what we, here is just the capital, the comparison um, um, to the model that um, between um, the approved budget from 2020, and this year Mark is going to like the way we did this because he didn't like the way the state did it. <laughs> that um, that we put the difference in between the columns. That uh, so here's the 20 uh, 20 budget. Here's the proposed 21 budget. Here's the difference between those two. Here's the 21 uh, budget. Here's the 10 year model. Here's the difference between those two. That um, I like when you double down. Thank you. Uh, I liked when you said, "Oh, but that shouldn't be that way." I don't think <laughs> she sent you. She sent you up so much. Oh um, that, um, uh, Ricky asked me about the capital reserves today. That um, so here shows what we have in capital reserves. That here's as of June thirtieth of two thousand nineteen. That years ago we put money in that was unallocated between which fire department we gave fifty thousand to the center. Uh, for to Candlewood for their boat, so the other fifty thousand this year went to Center for their um, Tower One Hundred. That, um, uh, but so here's what they started with in nineteen from the financial statements at the end of the year. The current year we added this much for the nineteen twenty year. That um, and I had not shown that fifty thousand in the, the budget, so that's what Ricky was asking about. Um, during the year to try and pay for the Tower 100 um, uh, and to pay for the um, ambulance, there were some transfers that were made that was from one to the other, mostly but all within center, that um, um, they spent some money that um, uh, on the ambulance. This is all they spent out of their reserves on those and so this is the balance of the reserves that's um, right now that um, um, and this one is um, the proposed additions based on the selectman's budget to the reserves 
And if you go with that, this would be the proposed balance of the reserves. Can I ask for one more line on that? Sure. <coughs> uh, if everybody wants. What the reserve needs to be at what date? Right? So uh, turf fields needs to be a million dollars by 2026. So a random right. number. Yeah. So that, that we can then say, wow, we really got to step up on this one, yeah. or boy, we're, we're getting We've close. We've seen that for the apparatus stuff. Yes. Yeah. The fire department is very good at it, yeah. which probably would But it's on a separate sheet, it. though. It's always yeah. comes um, on a separate yeah, schedule. So I Mark remember it on this one. Yeah, right. Because I remember the turf fields three or four years ago when we were trying to start a fund for them. I thought they wanted $100,000 a year for 10 years to get there. That's exactly right. The fields are about and we're nowhere near that. And no. the fields are so four years old. I, I propose in your capital budget this year to put two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. Yep. In the budget for one half of one field. Yep. And next year put another two sixty-five and do the field next year. No. The back field at the it's high school not, it's not here is in the worst it's shape. Not, but it's in and the it's not good. Yeah. We're going to patch it up this plan. year. Yeah. Yeah, That's exactly. going to be it. Well, we're going to be spending fifty to seventy thousand is the estimate. To get one or two more years out of it, right? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but uh, so I, I, I just think if we had another column, yeah. we could yeah. yep. more easily track our goal. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. All right, and then we can talk about the uh, finance, and I did finance board of finance. That um, um, not too much exciting here. That um, um, that I just want to talk a little bit about your budget since it's your budget that um, professional services, that um, this year we had an IT audit in there and that we've gone out to bid, um, we've received the proposals, um, we've got some differences of opinion from the IT professionals on who we should go with. Um, Steve and I just have to pull the trigger and, and I think we're all on the same page yeah. and call them up and, and um, I would like to be the point person on that um, just because you shouldn't report to your own if you're the auditee and IT dominant. We don't want them in. Point auditing point. Nothing own. against them in, it's just not good practice. Not so I wanted to be the point person and I just, it's waiting for me. Um, but we've got all the data and um, uh, that should be in the next week or so. Um, for So that was the 20, just to let you know where that stood. The 21, um, there's three things in the budget. The compensation and classification study, Steve talked about that last night. Um, he talked about eight positions when we did the budget. We weren't, we were talking about more than, we were talking about more than eight positions. I had tried to fit as many in as I could. Um, um, the inventory that, um, uh, we had interns. We've had five free interns now in the last year. Um, that, um, and we're trying to get one for this semester. We didn't quite get. We don't have one yet. Hard to get people to work for free. That, uh, but we did have five people that did it. That um, um, we had one of them go through the. Um, um, uh, we have multiple lists of assets, so we had to compare the the listing that. Um, uh, we have for the financial statements to the assessor's listing to the insurance company's listing to do that. So we did it with real estate. We have listing of licensed cars, um, tagged cars, um, but equipment, our records for the financial statements are pretty crappy in the, you know. That's not uncommon. It's oh, it's so not uncommon at all. But it is a big undertaking, but we could get a company to come in and do it. Anything over five hundred dollars, that uh, they would inventory, they would tag, um, they would give it to us so that we could upload it into Munis, or they would keep it. And I think that their fee for keeping it current is like two hundred and ten dollars a year. Did you bid that out to multiple companies? We're only getting. We're, we're only getting estimates now, okay. so. Um, so, but you have a number that that's a number. So that's a number. All of these are a number for that. that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but I used to, um, <laughs> my clients used their to, uh, my clients used to to use them, but right now that um, <clears throat> part of what we should be doing in finance is not just controlling cash, but controlling all the assets um, and. Yes, the people around us that they we control way too much, we're way too controlling. But, um, but you know, 
how many, what happens to these? I don't want, just as an example, what happens to all these chainsaws? What happens to, to this other stuff? Um, I don't think we'll be as lucky as one of my towns where uh, the pawn shop called them up and said, one of your employees just came in and, uh, with the equipment that's got your tag on it. But, um, but we need to have some sort of a system. We could, I'd like it for at least for the financial statements, but it was really cheap. That, um, um, and the question is that do we, the Board of Ed doesn't have it on their side either. Um, since we're in charge of the whole financial statements, do we do the whole uh, town? They have it for uh, technology, but not their, the other stuff. And, and we were just thinking a $500 number would be a decent number um, for inventory for if there was ever a fire that uh, we don't have anything. We don't have anything reliable right now. So that's what uh, that inventory is. Uh, whistleblower hotline, um, uh, fraud hotline that um, and I've got details on if you wanted them, but um, um, we also, oh, well, we get an audit. An audit doesn't look for fraud. The, you get, um, you get uh, most of your um, fraud from tips, that, um, and you will get tips that are political. You will get tips that are totally off base, um, which is why um, I, I reached out to Freedom of Information. Could it be the same as the ethics that, until they're vetted, that they're not public? And I haven't heard back from that. But two hundred and fifty dollars for a year that um, is why wouldn't we do that? that um, to my thought. How does that work? Who's picking up the phone and how does that go? Um, so they call a number and um, um, it's it is cheap. Some of the more expensive ones will. You know, if it's about this, they'll send it to here. If it's about, the, but this is two hundred fifty dollars. That um, they'll send three emails to to forward it anonymously. Um, my thoughts is created by Hearst Media. Um, <laughs> my thoughts is that the emails should go to um, CEO, CFO, audit committee. That's that's what I was thinking. I'm not sure I buy it. Uh, I guess it would depend on what kind of tips were coming in. But, but this, so, so some um, more expensive ones will, will. I'm saying who we would send it to would depend on what kind of tips came in. Because potentially you could see tips of, hey, this, my neighbor always has his uh, Pennsylvania truck parked in his driveway. You know, you would want to send it to the audit committee, you'd want to send that to the assessor. Yeah, so, so. This is one that, so there are services that do that, that we had one at our old firm, and we're talking $11,000, that, um, that's why. Yes, yeah, so this is going from the top end there. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then, down. so if that came in, um, that the only reason the audit committee should get it is if it was about Steve or, or me. Right. Um, yeah. um, so, so when talking to some of the other towns, most of their cases like this, it's a neighbor, Calling in on a neighbor. That's what I just said. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, I wasn't in the The same thing with school children that, that shouldn't be in your school. The vast majority of it is something. But that stuff would still I know he doesn't live in the hotline. It just wouldn't get right. filtered. Correct. Right. We could Correct. filter that in house. Correct. <coughs> and, um, We've talked enough about the children. Yeah. 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 yeah, I agree. It's $250. Um, but we want to see about FOI that we don't want to. Uh, you're going to look into that. Yeah. Um, if so one we'll thing wait. a year comes out of it, you exactly. get your money back. back. If one thing comes out in five years, you got your money back. In reality, you start 50 bucks. Um, uh, the other one is capital projects that um, we have a time entry system that's in this year that we've gone out to bid. We've met with the vendors. Um, we have received all the answers. Um, we have a difference of opinion on um, who we should pick. That, um, and so we have to get consensus on that. Um, um, we're, the people that are in, in talking about it are our finance office on the town side, Board of Ed finance office, um, police, um, and WPCA would like to, to maybe join on. So they're just, they haven't quite been in here yet. So we have to make that decision and, and we just have to get back to, to doing that. Um, that's different than what is in the budget for the 2021, 
which is an advanced scheduling program, which could be also used for the Parks and Rec, but essentially for the police, that um, right now that they've got um, three different systems that they're using. They're using a portion of Munis, they're using some paper, and they're using some um, um, other uh, lab tech program. Uh, it's very time intensive that um, when we ask questions from the finance side, we can't see that we can only call up and or email and say, okay, did this person really work these hours because it looks weird. That, um, and they can say, yeah, or they can say, oh, wait, there might be a mistake there. But we're falling on the ones that look weird. What about the ones that are mistakes that don't look weird? Um, um, what about all the time it's taking them? Um, the there are so many different categories. Remember, it's 365, three shifts a day. It's over time. How many it's weird holiday. things are you seeing in a typical month or year, period, whatever period you want to tell me? I would say that every Kevin reviews the payroll, and I would say that he asks about at least five things every pay period. And how many of those five, on average, are? Most of them are not wrong. I would say most. So one out of five, one out of fifty. I wouldn't think it's that. Yeah. Um, I would say one out of just trying to see how many 50, mistakes there actually one out of 15, are. That we have maybe. That, um, maybe one out of 15, one out of 20. Um, but that's not the only reason. That's one of the reasons to have it. One of the reasons is that it'll do. Um, it'll do things like um, 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 who is the next shift? That um, if you've got someone that calls in, that it has to, there's an email blast that has to go to the different people. Um, that um, um, it'll um, keep the programs better, and, and it'll just a lot of it is it'll save a lot of the time in the manual errors. That that's that's that was actually funded last year. Franks. It was a time entry system that was funded right. last okay. year. Doesn't have that's why I tried to put them both there. It's already paid for. That was the last year project. This is 2021. Which, which, so the 20 was a time entry that. Um, um, we're just talking about the 2021. The 2021 is the advanced schedule. It's an add on to the time entry. Oh, okay. So the, but was my question was there's no dollar amount on this particular. 25. Uh, so the vendor that um, there's the vendor that we talked to that um, the police like is 25,000. Um, Who's the one I was thinking? Um, that same Acme. one. <laughs> oh. So. So twenty-five grand is the cheapest that we're looking at. Not so. the uh, not the cheapest. That we're just trying to get a figure, and then we go out to bid. That, um, um, but um, the reason we have a disagreement on. We the, still don't have a figure, yet, so you don't have something in here. For that. I have a quote from one vendor. The yes, it's in, it's in there is the quote of the vendor that the police like. Where? It's, like it's one not the first one. It's under finance, please. Under general no. government. Police it's under oh, it's there it is. Sorry, yeah. it's the third one, yeah. It's it's the third one. And that's why we're having a hard time with the consensus that the Board of Ed likes a program that's really it's a nice app and real pretty, but it doesn't have the advanced scheduling program. So we would like to have them um, be the same company that are the interface with each other. Um, if you can't catch mistakes, that will cost, you know, as much as not having a good schedule. It seems like these are a more difficult schedule. Uh, they have a very complicated schedule. Yep. How, how does it roll into the parks and rec? How do they get the benefit? All the kids in the summer? Scheduling all those kids to come work at you're only working three hours a day. You work Monday, Thursday, Saturday, so they could do all the scheduling for all the kids. Remember, they hire about 180 kids every summer for the summer camp, the beach, and the camps they do. This is a one-off, no annual fees? One but there are annual fees. There are annual fees. What are the annual fees? That usually they're about 50% of the... 50? 50. So this is a very expensive program, then. It's not just 25000 This is a $100,000 program over five years. Right. Yeah, it's expensive. Seventy-five thousand over that. I need to make a scheduling program. All right. I think, it's for, I think that's for further discussion down the road. Yeah. Um, 
Any other questions on any of this? So, if you have a line item like that, what I would like to see is 25 grand, whether you do another line, $12,500 a year recurring. So, I, the, in your capital budget. So that budget, we know if we're getting ourselves into a long term. Yep. So, we ask that in the capital budget, and it, so it, sh it, it says the next 10 years. Are the two lines together? Um, on, it's on the detail page. The, the, so, it's page one. Years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that would be the same with any of these computer programs that there are continuing costs to um, Would you be able to split that? Because you said, could you split that cost over several department budgets? Because obviously the police like it, but in addition, you'd be using it for parks and rec. Would that well, we'll, we'll yeah, split and out and divide And the schools would pay for it. Right. So, um, so this, they wouldn't pay for this scheduling program, but they, we talked about could they use it for super, for substitutes, but they have a different thing that they do for substitutes. Um, we have to substitutes. Yeah. I get that it's all tax money, I'm just, you know, if yeah. it's different, if somebody has extra in their budget versus somebody else and you move it around a little bit, yeah. it might make more sense. I just know because Steve I'm no in charge of tracking all of my punch times over four locations and payroll could take me a day calling each person asking them you missed a punch you didn't what did you do so it does take a long time to decide to have a good scheduling system is quick and efficient and is important any other questions no it wasn't a question what was that a question oh, I mean, I, I didn't ask a question. I, I personally, like, oh. I'm a little overwhelmed by that line item. I'm not going to lie. Is that is there that much value in right. that line item? Right. I guess I, I appreciate what it does. I'm not belittling it. Don't take it wrong. But if we truly had a choice of spending that 25000 now and another 100000 over the next 10 years, is the value there or we can find value better? In this budget that we left out of this budget, maybe or some. I'm just or a good question. I don't have an answer. I'm not pushing you we'll in any to way. Say, yeah. We can go to chief when he comes in. I, yeah, yeah, because I don't. I don't know if I see quite that amount of value. So, so you, me personally. Yeah, you know, I think we should talk to the chief. Uh, it's one of the things he would like to have. I think. Right. It would ease their scheduling substantially, as from the initial indications, because. You know, doing 365 days a year. You and Dan are right. I think. Right. I think. And, 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 and we'll I'll say, Chief. If, 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 yes. if you're easing scheduling, in theory, you're, you, the police might be freeing someone else up for road yes. duty or whatever. The schools you're might right. be able to well, you'd be get rid of an administrator. Or freeing up or something. Right. 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 I just don't and see it right now. The, the other part that it helps us with is the documentation. That right now, all we have for documentation. In a, in a cohesive system is that, for example, we had one day where um, a police officer worked, um, sorry to talk about this in public, no, that's one. worked 21 hours a day for three days in a row. That, and we see that getting paid. Um, how do you work 21 hours a day for three days in a row? And so our, our, our documentation only shows that. Um, when you call and you get the the manual uh, paperwork, it's oh no that they didn't work that they were assigned to outside duty and then they canceled and if you cancel within two hours they get paid for four hours. So if we ever had a shooting, let's say an ex, um, now we have paperwork showing this person getting paid for 21 hours a day for three days in a row when. If you lose Pete, you don't know that, oh no, it was really 17 hours a day for three days. The detail is on his papers and his desk and his file draw. Mm. Again, Man. I think we need to talk to Chief. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, well, I don't know. And, and mm -hmm. while this uh, might be great for, for the, I, I want to talk to all the boards that we think are using it because, uh, to be honest, I don't see this being a useful tool for someone like the Board of Ed. Either your teacher shows up or your teacher doesn't show up. 
Yeah, this, yeah. the scheduling program we is not the board of no, it's park and rec and you well, had board right of now it's, it's right now it's just price for police. You had board of ed listed. And with the price, uh, the one above it was that's the already time, been approved. The time one. That's the time. That's Everybody who comes into the building has to log into the building basically, and so you're tracking yeah, people in the building. The so they come in at eight, they go out at four. You can see that. And I think that's even for safety, insurance, and all of oh, these yeah. other things. If there's a fire, we know Steve's looking for 10 employees because he can look it up. He's not right. looking for eight. Yep. And the price goes up if you add, like, a WPCA jump on and please will that 25 go up? Or park and rec. Or park and rec. Well, that, that will go yeah, up. That is just the price for police. Understood. Thank you. Do you, okay. do you think anybody outside of police really needs that? Uh, possibly park parks and rec. Yeah, the one hundred eighty. Because yeah. yeah. and, and I can't remember what the threshold is that because um, so. usually they sell it in groups of fifty, 50 or hundred mm -hmm. people. So I don't know. I can't remember what that threshold is. Again, it's a thing for the chief to see if he sees the value of that kind of money. It's Between the two systems, do you foresee it um, kind of mitigating any kind of potential fraud on? timesheet fraud and anything like that, like, for sure. I think what it does is allow us to more accurately and with more detail to track where our employees are, when they're doing it, when they're working, and so it makes it easier, particularly if you have any kind of liability issue, right, um, a claim against you because you were discriminating against somebody. It, it, instead of having to pull stuff out of paper records. The time entry or the advanced schedule? Either. So the time entry, the time entry right now, we're not in compliance with the state law, and that that people, we don't know the time checked in, the time checked out, that we don't check in or out for lunch, that so that's one of the reasons why we went with the time entry system, that um, because that's true for the unions, you know, exempt staff. All right, I come in at eight fifteen. It doesn't matter. I work till six. Nobody cares. But if I'm a union employee and I come in at eight fifteen. I'm 15 minutes late, but I work two hours overtime. You need to track that. We're doing it manually now. We're not at all. People are just telling us when they're coming in. So I, it's a control. Uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, it would, it would provide I don't think anybody's cheating us. I don't think anybody's doing anything wrong. Like the idea. But we're not meeting state, actual state requirements. Um, um, that, that it would, the time entry system, part of it is also, um, all right, that uh, the library wants another person, finance wants another person, which we haven't asked. That, um, but if we're both asking for another person and the library is not, their, their salaried people aren't putting in ex any extra time and finance is putting in extra time, we should know that. That um, I come from an environment where you get another person when you're already doing all that work and, and then you just cut back to your full time and then um, so, so um, it helps us with that. If uh, people take comp time, they're supposed to take it in the same week. But do we always see it? That um, that how do we know that Dumman wasn't up all night? That um, working on an IT issue, we we should be documenting that, and, and that's why she's taking Friday off. That that, that was just an example. That um, um, but. Um, we should be more accountable. Our biggest expense is time, and um, we should know a lot more about the time people are working than what we know now. That you've already approved. Yep. Cool. Okay. Are we, where are we at? Yeah, yeah. I'm done. You're done? I'm done. You're done for the night. You approved this budget? Unless you have other questions. Then. I don't. I've I got a follow-up list that I, I'll take yeah. I have a few cleanup items to go through. Well, we can't go to the executive tonight, right, because it's a special meeting. Uh, yeah, you, you want to, you know, it's a special meeting, you can't add the Right. You can do it yeah. next week. You can right. the meeting. That's what I'm trying to say. So on our agendas next week, we don't have a meeting tomorrow night, so we're clear. There's nothing tomorrow night. Next Tuesday, we're going to make our regular meeting so we're going to put out an agenda for next Tuesday regular meeting and we're going to swap the Wednesdays so your departments who are scheduled for Tuesday can you arrange that yes. to swap them yep. so the Wednesdays are going to Tuesdays yep. the Tuesdays are going to Wednesdays mm -hmm. so we don't have to send out 
10 emails. Can you do that, please? So Tuesday we're doing a re regular meeting, plus what are we doing Tuesday? What police department? candle and fire. Yeah. Right. So and just got to make sure yeah. your I'll department, just, Steve, are on board. Either. That's all. I'll just She's just got it ready to go, man. If you could. I'm not telling you. I'm adding an exec session on Tuesday. And add an exec <laughs> session on Tuesday. On and Tuesday. add an executive session on Tuesday. Okay, if it's a yeah, you, it's a still a special meeting because you move. Uh, so we got to put it out. Yeah, but we can put it on oh, the agenda. Oh, we just can't add it. We can't right. add it at the time. You can't right. add right. it right. at the meeting, but, but we can, can put it on the agenda. Right. You can add it tomorrow. This is so we're going to put in yes. for the regular meeting, go from Wednesday to Tuesday at executive session with the departments that were scheduled for that regular meeting night. Steve's going to make sure his departments are in line. Wednesday now is now the board of ed meeting that reschedule for the board of it. Mm -hmm. So I spoke. Right. Right. Probably this needs to get so we have yeah, to get rid of all the right I didn't know about this until now. It just, yeah, we, it just, just we happened. Yeah. Okay. There was a scheduling conflict. So yeah. And then, I can retype it and send it to you and then I will have to redo the it. I'll redo it. I'll have the agendas corrected. I don't think there's anything else. We put an exec session on for Wednesday just in case we don't get to it on Tuesday. That way we don't have to add it. Because you can always take it off on a special meeting. Wait, if we put executive session on for Tuesday and Wednesday, but we don't use Wednesdays, if it's a special, we don't have to go? No. So I should put it on. You just can't add something. Sounds like there's a lot on Tuesday. Yeah. So you can put an executive session on both. Right. If you don't use it Wednesday, fine. You just can't add a new item to a special. You can, make a a special. You you can it. not do something. Okay. All right. Could you just give more to the residents? Like Dan said, depending if we get to 10 o'clock on Tuesday night and we want to move it, we can move it. Okay. I will get that. Anything else? Any public comment? Is, is there public comment in there? Yes. Any public comment? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Fran, you, you can have an opportunity. I'm tired. Yeah. Yeah. With that, any motions? I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. Any seconds? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.